Okay? Some people are getting further and further away. So <laughs> Dipesh ji, where is Dipesh ji? We should not have a row behind this. You know, for me it is difficult to see you face to face. And unless I see you face to face, I do not know whether I am able to communicate or not able to communicate. So I have to keep looking at each one of you, you know, look at your face, whether it is getting communicated, not getting communicated. And if you are left behind at one point, then it becomes very difficult to, you know, catch again. Vinay ji, aage aaja ye, piche roko, begin with exercise one. Exercise one is about observing oneself by oneself. Right? First three steps, in fact, first step is the most important step. Okay? I am being aware of myself. Till now we were aware of all things around, right? Except ourselves. Now we are saying, let us begin by being aware of our own self. So three things are said here. Be aware. Once we are aware of ourself, we try to observe our imagination which includes desire, thought, expectation. And third point is that without any reaction. This is very significant. Only when I am at the place of pure observer, I can look at things, observe things without reaction. If I am operating with my sanskar, then I am likely to react. So this no reaction is a very strong condition which you should keep in mind. So I am being aware of myself. I am observing my own imagination. Two. Third, I am not reacting. Whatever is there in the imagination, I am just observing it. Whatever is there in my Imagination, I am just observing. Is that clear? Step 1 is clear to everyone? Or there is any doubt? To use the left lane, helmet should be wear. ID card should be where. In that case, immediately I was, my thought was that it is our responsibility, we know that. But through that announcement, we are making it. Why it is so? That was going, that, that time when the announcement came, that is the thought immediately came to my mind. Similarly, when I enter into the lift, first floor, you are reached ground floor, that is every time that announcement has been made. I need to be aware of that I am in ground floor, I am in first floor. But that uh, voice is coming and making us to aware that is in ground floor, that is we are in first floor. That immediately that thought came. Why this announcement made? I need to aware of myself. Through that someone is telling I am in ground floor, I am in first floor. Is it necessary? In that time, uh, my thought was going like that. When I am traveling in the lift, that was the thought. When I am entering into the campus, when the announcement made, that was the thought. Is that right? Am I observing that moment? Yeah. So, thought you are observing, 
now we have to start observing the feeling like when i heard this announcement and i started thinking about over it what was my feeling feeling of relationship feeling of opposition because many of us you know might get feeling of opposition it was also there it is my responsibility to be aware of why should we announce that why these people are when i am aware of that i am thinking about others why they are not following if that is the case coming to my mind that feeling is in that type of opposition it's not yeah. in harmony why these people are like that why should they need this announcement they can be disciplined self discipline like why this announcement is required yeah so that is important you know that feeling you have that you have to observe so when i am observing the imagination the most important thing in that imagination is the feeling that i have okay because it is that feeling which will make me happy or unhappy right so step 1 we are saying let us be aware of ourselves let us observe our imagination particularly the feeling and just observe without any reaction these three things we are doing in step 1 step 2 we are asking whether the feeling that i have at this moment whether it is naturally acceptable to me not naturally acceptable to me okay step 3 we are asking ourselves that with this feeling that i have at this moment am i in a state of harmony and happiness or a state of disharmony and unhappiness am i comfortable am i not comfortable these are the three steps right number 1 i am being aware of myself and i am observing my imagination particularly observing my feeling without reaction step 2 i am verifying whether this feeling is natural unnatural then i am verifying whether i am comfortable with it uncomfortable with it happy with it and happy with it this three steps are clear to you not clear clear yes um so i want to ensure that i have understood not reacting and evaluating properly so once it happened that um, i saw there that there is an opposition i was aware of it and i did not try to change it and i observed it i wanted to know why and it uh, it stayed stayed there for three and a half days and after that that is gone like that opposition was gone so is that a correct method or should i try to change that opposition yeah but you know if it it is staying over for three days then somewhere either the you know observation is not taking place or evaluation is not taking place right this preconditioning is taking over otherwise continuing with a feeling which is not natural cannot go on for such a long time if it is going on for such a long time then at one moment i observe and i find it is not worth right but next moment my sanskar my preconditioning takes over right and under that preconditioning i have that same feeling again right so that is dominating this preconditioning is dominating over your awareness otherwise it will not continue for three day long time you know it will it is difficult to continue even for few seconds if i am aware i am observing i am evaluating without reaction then it will simply drop down in fact you can handle it every moment if you are aware so one moment is okay 
some sanskar became active and you took decision for a wrong feeling right now the moment you become aware of it and you are able to evaluate it properly without reaction this feeling will not continue next moment it will change so when you say without reacting it is outside reaction you are saying it is reaction inside we are not talking about the outside anymore exercise 1 no nothing about outside it is all about inside outside reaction is a very late kind of you know so i uh, i have a problem understanding that not reaction now yes reaction means you see something for example you saw that you have a feeling of opposition in you right when you evaluate it you find that it is not the right feeling okay now you start having a feeling of opposition for this feeling of opposition you want that it should immediately go why is it continuing for 3 days or two moments you know three moments that feeling that it should not continue and it should go away and it is not going away that is the reaction yes yeah, so that was not there yeah. i was i was comfortable with that that let it be i want to observe this yeah but if you are able to see and evaluate that it is not a natural feeling then it will not continue for such a long time what is happening if it is continuing for 3 days or even for 1 minute what is happening is that you are observing finding that it is not natural right next moment your sanskar takes over you are no more aware and that sanskar is again you know bringing back those that feeling otherwise it will not continue there is no use of it i mean the feeling of opposition if i observe it and i see that it is not worth it is leading to unhappiness why will i continue with it it's very interesting you know in fact if you find something wrong outside you may take time to correct it um. when you can see that there is something wrong inside the moment you see it evaluate it it will go you don't have to do anything for it bhaiya i'm having one doubt here see i'm searching something in my inner i'm having block here and there i can't find myself what i'm searching what i need to be then how come i can reach my thing i have a doubt what is this. your name preeta preeta this all you are aware what we are working on ah this is all about that this is all about your question i'm trying for uh, even uh, kumar bhai ask us to uh, close our eyes and uh, think about our things what we need to map our ideas but we i'm need, thinking we need this fan this fan is needed yeah yes See, I'm doing my things, but I can't uh, find where I need to go and what I need to search. Uh, here and there, blocks are there. I can't find. It is too dark. Yeah. See, what is happening is that you are not acquainted with yourself. Okay, you have never paid attention to yourself. now when you start paying attention to yourself we you find everything is so dark you know very terrible horrifying right yeah all this will happen to begin with but then keep working on this you will start finding what is happening inside right what is happening inside whether it is right not right whether it is natural or unnatural whether it is leading to happiness unhappiness 
and one thing is very clear ultimately we all we all want continuity of happiness there is no doubt about that you have any doubt about it no so where we want to be is very clear whether we are there or not there is what we are trying to find out and if we are there it is fine if we are not there we can find out what is the reason when you start the process yes everything looks very you know unknown very dark you know but when you start observing you can find out what is what you are what is your state of being what is your imagination what is your feeling right what are your sanskar all that you can find out it is possible to find out Namaste bhaiya namaste to all uh, trying to answer for the lata mam's question uh, to begin with uh, this type of announcement uh, we used to hear in the public places just to put the people into the comfort uh, position that is uh, such type of announcement uh, that we would able people to hear the distance, the, yeah yeah bhaiya uh-huh. the airports metro stations so uh, still we are aware of what is happening around us but in spite of this uh, in spite of that they are trying to put the public into the comfort level maybe this type of announcements they are doing and this also guide the physically challenged people and in the lift they can they will be aware more than us but uh, in fact um, then as they are more aware i hope and for the blind people this will be very useful the lift the announcements uh, i hope so uh, as my observation yeah yeah that's yeah bhaiya yes yeah, so when you listen to this announcement you don't have a feeling of opposition you think that they are helping you yes, yes good yes so step 1 2 3 are you able to work on it or you need any clarification anybody needs any clarification regarding step 1 2 3 okay step 4 is it clear to everyone that whatever feeling i have at this moment it is ultimately me who is who is responsible it who is responsible for it is it clear Uh, good morning sir i am venkatesh uh, i am following the steps what you have uh, listed and uh, since we have attended uhv 1 and 2 coexistence is the priority for every human so we are adhe- i am adhering to it and my family is also very much aware of it as many of them know that i have a uh, koshala near my home here and uh, now my area is fully populated fully populated in the sense all vacant lands are almost constructed so the neighbors who settled now near to my kosala they wanted to be removed they doesn't want to have kosala nearby uh, their homes that even my home is nearby that only next to that only but 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 they all try in a group as a community writing petitions to government and things like that to get this removed even collector visited once since they keep on petitioning and he has given a clearance that no way it is a hindrance to other people he is maintaining it in a pakka what way it should be done i have uh, employed uh, two families completely for it uh, we do everything that is required and even the cattle is not on the road or near to their home it's only inside the kosala but still people keep you know hindering they try to trouble they they do all sort of things to ensure that uh, kosala is removed now i i though i observe all this i want to be with coexistence i don't show any sort of hatredness towards them i don't practice it also i don't shout at them i don't yell at them even though they trouble in all possible way all are educated everyone is working in software industry and uh, companies 
but they try to do everything possible but even then at moments whenever i think about it i feel disturbed so the disturbances from external i i can understand it but do i am practicing it i am unable to get rid of that i don't know what to do yeah so if i study myself properly i can see that i operate either with my right understanding or i operate with my preconditioning which is not based on right understanding and if i am operating with my preconditioning which is not based on right understanding then depending upon what is my preconditioning right i will uh, do the imagination on the basis of that right if that preconditioning has gone wrong the whole imagination will go wrong this happens with me this happens with everybody so if i can see that then if somebody is having a wrong imagination and therefore is expressing it as a wrong behavior or work i will not feel irritated right see the kind of education we are giving today it has that preconditioning that human being is the ultimate authority to rule over this whole nature right interestingly they want milk but they don't want cows <laughs> now this kind of education we are giving yes in fact smart cities means cow free cities campus is smart campus means there are no cows in the camp- campus you can keep dogs right i mean very funny kind of you know assumptions we have now okay and this is interesting you know if you there was a serial you know by name chanakya whether you have seen it or not i don't know but the one interesting incident is that when this uh, alexander has come to india and he was trying to you know fight and win over uh, at one place this uh, army people of the uh, and it was not a big army very small army it was okay these people protested they said no we want to go back we don't want to continue fighting you know and there is a discussion going on between alexander and you know this uh, no not porus alexander and his army people who want to go back alexander is trying to convince them and they are placing the argument why they don't want to continue here you know and one of the strong argument that they are giving is that we cannot fight with these people who live with animals this is one of the strong argument that these people are living with animals how can we fight with them so these assumptions have now become your assumption these days but it comes from greeks no? so for alexander and the army the smart city even then was that no cows no animals for you it was very different for you the cows have always been the integral part of your house family. right family mother cow yeah, okay now that is the crisis huh? the kind of education that we are giving today it presumes that you are not the part of the nature you are the master of nature and you can exploit the nature the way you want right you have freedom to have milk without having cows okay. yes this is the way we think yes you press the button and milk must come and that machine must look very you know beautiful yes so if you understand all this you know and you can understand that people work with assumptions and the assumptions may be wrong 
then you will not react to this kind of you know things. It is good that that collector at least was sensible. I mean, I would say, yes. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have said, no cows in this smart city area. That's it. No <laughs> argument. They want everything to be in the villages. But they must get things in the city. They want milk in the city yeah, and cows in the villages. Villages. Right? Green electric power. Green? Electric power. <laughs> green? Ah, green electric power, yes. <laughs> In fact, this perception is a very, you know, long kind of, uh, kind of a struggle going on. I mean, traditionally, if you, you know, uh, look at this fight going on between the Sura and Asur. Sura means one who is in harmony. Sura, you know, harmony. Asur is one who is not in harmony. Okay. So, he is always fighting. Now, there is a difference in these two approach of life. Okay. So, if you try to understand this approach of life of understanding the harmony and being in harmony, you know, through which there is a possibility of continuity of happiness. Of course, those who are of the belief that the life goes not by harmony, but by disharmony, by contradiction, by struggle, you know, by fight, by opposition, they think differently because they have different assumptions. The assumptions may be wrong, they may be suffering, you know, for it. But that is what it is. At least I must understand this and I, if I understand this properly, I will not react. I will not make, make myself suffer for the mistake that they are doing. Venkatesh ji, is it clear? So, thanks to that collector. Of My nature of job is quality control in earlier. For example, in case of any supplier, for example, in case of tin weight is 100 grams, they put 95 grams, I rejected that lot. I am not negative thing. I want to correct the system. Then slowly, everyone says uh, quality control. Then after the five years, they can considered as a quality assurance lab. But my ways of thought are going on, which place is wrong. I want to correct the system. For example, if I enter this area, we are the ID card. This is a common fact. Then if you draw something, the fine put in that area. That control the discipline. Here my question is, we want to correct the system, we want to rules and regulation to be followed. Is it correct? Yeah. So, what is it? I mean, what is the question? My question is, finding the fault to the others to maintain the quality. Yeah. So, focus is to maintain the quality or to find the fault? Maintain, maintain the quality. Yeah. Quality assurance may be there. Yeah. So, what for the quality? The specification is there. From the specification, I want to follow that area. Yeah, so if they are not following it, remind them with the feeling of relationship, not with the feeling of opposition. If you have the feeling of opposition, then it is you are in trouble. If you have the feeling of relationship, you are okay, comfortable. So, if you are not paying attention, I keep reminding you, right? So many times. Okay. <laughs> so, every time I am checking whether you are paying attention or not paying attention. But I am not having a feeling of opposition for that, you know. 
if you are not paying attention i can understand you have so many things to pay attention to right i am not the only one or what i am saying is not the only thing right so in fact many people uh, complain that you know you repeat same thing so many times you know so i say i repeat it so many times because when i am saying something i am not sure where you are you know you may be sitting here with your open eyes but you may be somewhere else so when i am saying something and you are not here right it does not reach you so i will repeat 10 times so that at least once you you know you have been able to pay attention to it so i am aware you know of what is happening but for that i have don't have the feeling of opposition i have that feeling of relationship and i know what it you, what you are possibly right and i presume that you can do anything but i have to be responsible thank so you sir you go around anywhere at least once in 10 times you can you will happen to hear Uh, sir said about the kosale and uh, sir said about the quality assurance uh, i guess uh, the quality assurance might be it is related to the code of conduct and uh, uh, the immediate boss or the top management might be uh, i mean answerable and uh, may take the responsibility to um, uh, i mean resolve this but in terms of what sir said that kosale and um, uh, what about uh, um his mental harmony sir by the way we are not here to educate them and um, uh, make them to understand their individual or personal virtue and all but uh, he has to um, restrain or uh, maintain his own or his family uh, mental harmony at least uh, preventing uh, preventing that situation uh, whatever they are making for them no so what is the solution for him to maintain this family level of uh, mental acony i mean mental harmony what is your good name i am santana lakshmi sir Thanks. santana lakshmi oh, what we are focusing here is the harmony inside okay man you know maintaining the quality within so if we focus there i think it will be better otherwise we'll get lost you know these rules regulations standards and all that let us find out what is the standard inside okay which feeling is natural which feeling is unnatural which feeling leads to harmony and happiness which feeling does not lead to harmony and happiness so if we focus it there it will be good okay yes yeah so i am not going to the details of that fine sir okay with 1 2 and 3 if we are able to see our feeling evaluate it without reaction and you know we can see that the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is what leads to happiness you know and otherwise feelings are what leads to unhappiness if we can do that then the purification of my feeling takes place on its own without i trying to enforce it this is important that just by observation and evaluation without reaction the purification of the feeling takes place and if there is any wrong feeling it drops at the next moment if it is a right it is a right feeling it has continuity so this will happen by itself you don't have to enforce that is one step 4 if you have been working on it by this time you must have realized that whatever feeling that is there in me is something which i have decided right it has not come from outside some trigger has come from outside on the basis of that i might have reflected over it you know and based on my understanding or preconditioning without understanding i have decided for some feeling but ultimately i am responsible for the feeling that i have at this moment and not the other person or the external circumstances are you able to see this because this is a very important step sir i have one example in my institute 
uh, my institute awarded as a green campus green campus so they have laid uh, so many trees in the beginning 1995 it was established and uh, very nicely uh, this workshops and all these uh, 30 to 40 percent space is occupied and remaining space uh, plantation and everything is done after 25 years because i was there since from then so i have observed and very beautiful people also feel lot of uh, happiness uh, with the trees and green greenery and uh, students also able to read under by sitting under the trees they have arranged some platforms like that under the trees and everything so because of uh, the sanction of uh, additional seats of ACT, because of CSE and all branches, allied uh, branches uh, coming forward and many more uh, number of sections have been sanctioned. So they are, uh, uh, there is no scope for expand in uh, uh, lateral direction, longitudinal direction. So what they, uh, they have awaited uh, till few, few years and uh, they are unable to decide what to do. And what they start doing is cutting the, all the trees and uh, the space is occupied and buildings have been come, constructed one by one, black by black, black by black. Is it a harmony, uh, relatedness they are uh, expressing among the people because number of seats are increasing and students are coming and learning and growing themselves or they are uh, other way around, they are doing some inharmonies uh, for the nature, nature is concerned. So I am unable to decide what should I feel and uh, I am unable to decide uh, the feelings coming from my heart or uh, I am able to de decide my feelings or not because I am always in a disturbed mode if I think of that incident and uh, watching my, from my eyes uh, since from the beginning. So that is the uh, thing I want to clarify. Yeah. I said these two things I should be keep I should be able to keep separately. Something happening outside which is wrong. And I having a feeling of opposition for it. You think they are the same thing or they are two different things? What do you think? Different. Different. So I must understand that. I must understand that this uh, college now wants to expand in regard of whether it has a space or not. Okay? Then AICT wants some construction in regard of whether it is you know green campus or not green campus. All these are having their own set of assumptions. Yes. And they are making the judgment on the basis of their assumptions, which may be wrong. In that case, what do I do? Do I spoil my feeling? Or I continue to have the right feeling and try to work for whatever I can do, you know, in the given circumstances for the improvement. Right? So, at least I have to take care of my feeling immediately. I cannot keep quiet. Uh, since uh, 25 years, I am observing all these and enjoying people and students and myself and uh, flower, uh, trees, uh, plants and uh, flowerings and everything beautifully I have seen. And once I see the destruction of all these, I am able to... <laughs> I can understand your point. I mean, I'm not that I'm not able to understand. But I'm saying that you want to do something, do something for it. But for that, don't have a wrong feeling in yourself and suffer for it. That's all I am saying. With right feeling also, I can work on it. For example, if I look at things around, I can see that the kind of education we are giving today, right? It is not a right education that we have been talking about. But do I become unhappy about it by spoiling my feeling? Or I do something for it. The whole effort of USB is essentially trying to improve upon the education that we are giving today. Without reaction, we are doing it. And we can do it. And probably we can do it better without reaction. Yeah.
unfortunate thing is that good people when they don't they find that there is something wrong happening they get into reaction they make themselves unhappy right and when they are unhappy they keep reacting outside and that is taken as a position and then we get into lot of struggle and in the process we are not able to do what is right to be done sir then uh, the moral of uh, this session might be we can take it in this way like uh, as you said this i mean as you pointed out uh, correctly where we'll have a scope of doing some betterment we can where we are uh, doesn't have any scope to do a betterment whether uh, at least we just be in our self itself and not to over exaggerating what we are uh, unable to do it for the betterment is it isn't it sir <clears throat> yeah so what minimum we are saying is at least take care of your feeling take care of your state of being yeah if you are having the right feeling right feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence then what you will do you will try to work out what you can do with that feeling of uh, relationship right so if i have feeling of relationship with all the students who are going through education then i will think of what to do you know to help them that even if they are going through a wrong kind of education and inhuman education can i do some big you know can i be of some help to them right i mean now once you go through ehb you realize that it is possible you know to do something at least you know at least draw their attention towards the possibilities of what is right okay to be able to see the life in its completeness right all those things are possible now with this you don't go about you know fighting with everyone that this system is wrong and you know it should be immediately closed and all that okay it's not needed even this system which is not giving a right kind of education is giving you a space to work for right education so better we explore any alternative or um, identify any uh, i mean any things rather spending much time uh, with that unsolvable things thank you sir. yeah yes. i am saying that at least don't have feeling of opposition don't suffer for it what gupta ji is saying srinivas right yes. srinivas ji is saying is he is suffering i am saying don't suffer you do not suffer you have the feeling of relationship be comfortable then see what you can do you know then you will be able to work out a better solution and you will not suffer at least correct sir okay so this four step is that i am responsible for my feeling and if i want to take the right decision about my feeling then step 6 is very important look and check for yourself which feeling is naturally acceptable to you feeling of relationship or opposition which feeling is naturally acceptable relationship relationship feeling of harmony or disharmony harmony harmony coexistence or struggle coexistence this you must keep checking every time and if you are able to come to this conclusion that it is the feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence that is naturally acceptable to you then you can get back to you know step 1 to 3 okay get back to step 1 be aware every moment look at your feeling evaluate that feeling whether it is in accordance with relationship harmony and coexistence or not in accordance with relationship harmony and coexistence that is what is exercise 1 all seven steps can be merged into this i am aware every moment i am looking at my imagination i am looking at my feeling and i am evaluating whether it is in accordance with relationship harmony and coexistence or otherwise whether it is leading to happiness or unhappiness if i do this much all your self purification will take place 
on its own. You don't have to struggle, don't have to fight. In a very natural manner, the self-purification is going to take place. Your evolution is going to take place. Your happiness is going to increase and all that, you know, that is desirable. So this is exercise one, put together. Yes, by With this, yes. yeah. So, uh, according to the exercise one and the very first point, uh, everywhere we talk about the desire, thought, expectation and observe, etc. When you get up early in the morning, no way thanksgiving note, I am not able to observe it here. Because gratitude, that is the word, we have it in this UHV. But whenever we get up, a new day God has given us, the before, past, that is the before day, He had been with us for the whole day. Why don't, uh, as human beings, everyone, everyone should thank for the life that He has given it. And the new day, let His guidance be there with us. Nowhere I am able to see that uh, gratitude or the thanksgiving note. Whatever may be the things, either Isha Allah or uh, Lord uh, Shiva or uh, Jesus or whatever it is, the thing or Buddha or whatever it is. There should be, we should be grateful that we are alive. One more new day has been given to us in spite of all difficulties and that will bring acceptance, that will bring uh, peace within us, that will bring harmony within ourselves because we talk about farmers every time I am able to hear the examples in UHB introductory two and etc. Farmers, they are working. Without they put their legs and hands and the physical part inside the paddy fields, we don't get the food. Yeah, every moment before having the breakfast, dinner or whatever the eatables we have, just a moment, few practice it, few of the human beings, they practice it. Just a thanksgiving, yeah, for this food that has been given without any poisonous nature, etc. Yeah, this kind of reminders are useful. But if you look at what is being said here, is that I must be able to see that this whole existence is in the form of coexistence, in the form of harmony, in the form of relationship, number one. Number two, I must become that. Coexistence, harmony and relationship, every moment. That becomes my feeling. Right? That becomes my expression. Right? So, I become one with this coexistence, harmony and relationship. That is ultimately what is being, you know, said every time. Okay? Reminding that there is coexistence, reminding that there is harmony, reminding that there is relationship is good thing. If people are not reminded of it, they may not even pay attention to it. So, it is good to set those reminders. They are welcome. But those reminders are so that you ultimately sublimate into this. This is what you become. Right? You become the coexistence, you become the harmony, you become the relationship. Right? Every moment you have that feeling, every action of you is in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship. That will ensure continuity of happiness for you and for it will work for the happiness and well-being of everyone. That is what is being said. So, morning reminders are fine. Evening before going to sleep, if you remind, it is fine. But you should be that all the time, every moment, in continuity. That is what is being said. So many of these traditions, you know, if you look at what we were discussing that day, all religions basically are trying to 
draw your attention towards this. In order to draw their attention, they have some symbols, right? Some, you know, words, some processes. But ultimately, what is the idea? To remind you of this, to draw your attention towards this, so that you understand this and you be this. Unfortunately, in place of understanding this and being this, we hold on to those symbols and fight with those symbols. So we ourselves don't realize and we are not helping the others to realize, but we think that those symbols are important and my symbol is better than the symbol of the other. You know, those two, three experiences that they, you know, shared. Now, the problem is not with Hanmanji or Shiva or Christ. The problem is with us. We are not trying to understand what they are trying to signify. Right? And we want them to do our work. And then we are fighting who is the great hero. Okay. <laughs> so, but if you understand what they are trying to say, indicate and be with that, then we'll make our life better and help to make the life of the others better. So, those reminders are useful. But then you should become that. That is the basic idea. So, when you say, be in the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto it, you have to understand what is being in, you know, in the kingdom of God. And this is what we are saying. This is being in the kingdom of God. Huh? Being in coexistence, harmony and relationship. Right? That is the kingdom of God. Yes. And if that is there, you are the happy all the time. And you are working for happiness of everyone else. Then what is the meaning of love? It is not in, I am not talking about in fluctuation or etc. What is the meaning of love? Being in relationship with everyone, everyone, having a feeling of relationship for everyone, that is the love. Compassion is expressing that feeling of love, relationship to everyone, that is compassion. And what is truth? That coexistence. Understanding of the coexistence, that is truth. So truth, love, compassion. Understanding the coexistence, harmony and relationship, that is truth. Having the feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship, that is love. Expressing that feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship is compassion. Isn't it? And we must have that. And all these religions are trying to remind us of that. So those reminders are good, but that should become, you know, the whole life for us. Bayashan. Rajulji, can we move to excess 2 per kuch kaam karna abhi? Do we have to? able to understand excess 1, step 1, 2, 3. So at that moment, I am able to feel that I was having the feeling of ego and at that moment, I am able to correct it. But the next time, it also gets repeated by you. At that moment, I am able to set it right. It is not set it right forever. Again, the same moment comes. Again, I have to evaluate. Yes. Because we have accumulated so many of preconditionings without being aware of them. Right? And that at this moment, your awareness is not that strong. Therefore, what happens at this moment, I am aware, I am looking at my feeling, I am evaluating it and when I evaluate it, it gets right, you know, gets corrected. But then next moment, I am still you know, again unaware. And when I am unaware, another precondition becomes active and it takes over. So that will go on happening, you know, because so much we have accumulated. Therefore, we need, you know, for thousands of 
association with the body you keep on accumulating and this body also some 40 years 50 years we have accumulated so much of this sanskar this preconditioning so you have to work with them it will take time we will have to work with them Bhaiya. yeah yes and you know to work with this exercise one and two already umesh ji has mentioned if we have joined morning ex, you know session from 5:30 to 6:30 in english and 6:30 to 7:30 in hindi uh, it is quite useful because whole lot of work has to be done you know it will not be solved immediately uh, because you have lot of this sanskar earned by you you know that is what you are earning all through life and you want to now set it right so it will take time okay how many of you have not been to this morning session is that one two three four five six okay unless there is something very difficult for you to do it you know we would recommend that you know you can join through it and it is online so you have all the flexibility okay i mean sometime you cannot hear fine but most of the time you can hear through with your phone and bluetooth bluetooth and all those things already have been discussed so i will uh, recommend that if you can uh, you know possibly do it do that because it takes needs lot of you know kind of effort on your part to work with yourself because you have done so much in unawareness and accumulated so many of preconditioning that you do not know what all you have accumulated right and that you, you only you can know yes shall i continue bhaiya uh, namaste bhaiya here yes 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 bhaiya janani ji yes uh, not janani sumati 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 <laughs> yes bhaiya uh, bhaiya uh, trying to answer for geeta ka's question um don't answer others question that leave it to me no no just okay <laughs> let let let, let, uh, let me give it a given example i'll try to answer her bhaiya so that in continuation with your explanation bhaiya that is the deep rooted sanskar we used to say suppose if we take a banyan tree uh, if we cut all the branches under the favorable situation the tree will again grow uh that is the similar happens with an each and every one not only with geeta ka yes. so since we are trying to uh cut it and again cut cut, cut but since the root is there so because of the deep root uh, we could not uh, come out of that e- egoistic problem so uh, some f- under some favorable condition again it will grow again it will grow so that is the thing which we have go- got into the loop thank you bhaiya thank you for giving me time <laughs> <laughs> nice bhaiya <laughs> well, like thank you and love the way you call my name beautifully you call my name only one person in my department call my name beautifully he will call me janani ma'am his name is rohit sir whoever call no i don't like the way they call but he calls beautifully they will call hey janani hey where are you hey like that different names they will call i think i am like a pickle in the department for everyone <laughs> pickle whoever like they will touch and eat na like that i am a pickle in the department okay they have lots of affection that i know because during the struggle my struggle they had prayers and uh, that time they were helping me that i know but uh, the way the way to call the name yesterday when you call it remembered me rohit sir how beautifully you used to call so sweet you are the way you call my name i like it really uh, next thing till now i was imagining going nature means going outside i love to go to mountain region only i don't like to be in this city and all i used to tell in home for the past 2 uh, 3 years but i would have born for a family in uh, mountain region so with the parrots birds everything i will be happily staying there rather than this in city life by mistake god made me born in this family okay and by mistake god made me to marry and all uh, uh, see all the problems in the family uh, so instead i could have been there born for a saint uh, roaming there in the mountain 
i actually thought nature is observing outside only hills okay uh, beautiful places places i mean is tree shrub everything these are the common thing which i like from childhood but that is not that alone nature is how you understand how yourself and respond to other when i am able to get happiness by seeing a green thing a greenery thing and uh, get happiness in my mind why i am not able to get uh, happiness by seeing a fellow so i want to change that uh, irritation limit in my mind every time i will be irritated if you ask me second time i will be irritated but i have asked 100 question to you you never get irritated yeah i am amazed today morning also i am telling ma to my mother and my husband they are living actually supraja madam used to tell they are living the way i ask her how it is possible but when i come in person and observe only i can find that you people are living in the way you teach us you achieve seriously yeah really hats off to awesome to you it's a good i want to give appreciation no applause to them don't even expect this applause i know that yeah because in my life i love to see nature i want to sleep that is the main ambition in my life my life uh, is going like that but that irritation limit uh, yeah yesterday night also i irri- got irritated with student then i said sorry i told uh, you i promised you i will change uh, but that uh, as madam said na that ego or something uh, what it is i don't know how it is bursting out from the inside uh, uh, i do not know then i said the student sorry then i said thanks okay i uh, uh, yesterday i fought with my mother then night i cried i told her sorry suddenly then because yesterday fully you were coming in my mind yeah yeah teaching so how we need to change so when i keep on thinking how to change with this uhv slowly we, i can change yes thank you bhaiya i don't react because i don't want to lose my happiness <laughs> so if you realize this you will also not lose your temper you know and not react because one thing i am sure that you don't want to lose your happiness but if you can see this relationship yes sir sir actually nancy ma'am and uh, santana lakshmi ma'am they were telling no like uh, two different uh, uh, relate relation i mean relationship between two different backgrounds and how they are having fight in the family but i am from the same caste same family itself my husband but still uh, like i was brought up in a, a manner that uh, girls are very strong my mom used to tell always and i was brought up in that way my mom brought me very strong brought up me to be a very strong girl uh, just imagine i have a brother whenever my brother comes home late my mom will keep him out of the house as someone said uh, they'll just she'll just keep him out of the house question him and then only send him inside but whenever i am late to home she'll uh, she'll tell ayu she is very late she might be very tired let me go for the co- uh, preparation of coffee like that so it was like i was grown up like that and uh, after my friendship with some of my close friends uh, my i had some a few principles for me if i get married to someone i will not give dowry being a girl so every day i am fighting with this societal problem only so i kept up that and till today i don't give my salary to my husband and i don't uh, i have not given any dowry and i have not even got a penny from my mom's house so that is how i am living myself the thing is uh, uh, being uh, many of them here you have given your daughters in marriage you know how much it is difficult to give her in marriage giving dowry so the thing is though my husband my first uh, message to my husband when they came in approach to marriage was i will not give dowry i know uh, it is going to create a big uh, disaster in my life since uh, still i told I, i will not give dowry i'll not give my salary and i'll not move from my place i want to be with my parents only so with these conditions and at that time itself i wanted people with right understanding only to 
come to me so with the right understanding he came to me even before uhv uh, because my mom even without uhv all these things which uh, we we study here she used to tell and i know i just used to understand but still in a deeper manner i understand here only so why i was telling here is uh, though my husband uh, took me like uh, with a right understanding he came to me but often we have a fight whenever someone tells him uh, my wife came with this much money my wife came with this much thing uh, and to note actually i am from a very rich background still i don't want to give anything money or anything to anyone uh, who wants m- to be with me if they want only my money then i don't want them to be with me so this is my principle and i have seen many cases wherein because of this dowry uh, their lives have gone like anything so this thing and what i believe is only if we start changing we can change the society so what i am about to ask is Uh, though we are in a we are traveling in a right understanding mode often when a stimulation is from outside maybe through as everyone said through my mother in law so once again my mother in law is a very sweet person uh, but still some so, some cases when someone calls and talks to her she will tell her uh, daughter in law she came with hundred sovereigns see my case but beyond all this Uh, she has one more daughter in law and a daughter too but she she strongly believes that anything happens to her even if her son is going to not take care of her her daughter in law myself will take care of her and she is very having a strong belief in that and she she has the i'm proud to say uh, amongst everyone else other daughter in law even in uh, other than daughter she has she has more affection on me whatever i ask for she will do for me and uh, her daughter is in fact uh, uh, having a grievance for that she used to tell she is doing for you not for the daughter like that and all so beyond all this if they have any stimulation from outside they'll talk we are uh, see you though you we married you only based on your uh, properties and other things but nothing to do with that simply coming simply you are like that some that thing every uh, at least once in a month we will have this fight so how to i though i don't react but i slowly respond after some time i will explain them but how long throughout the life do we have to be responding alone when will they go into that feel of right understanding at the end my husband will conclude i don't want anything i want only you okay fine but still th- if that is there purely he will not ask me the next time right he or my mother in law they will not ask me the next time so when will they come to that feeling of right understanding so if i am not even able to change my own people when i am going to change the society the most difficult thing is to change oneself you know <laughs> so <laughs> interesting you know that day before yesterday there was few sharings you know and the focus was the f- of the sharing was that because we belong to two different backgrounds there are a lot of problems okay but interestingly the three sharings had three different backgrounds you know okay problem was common okay <laughs> and <laughs> and what she is also saying you know that the the issue is not the background the issue is that we are not able to strike at the right thing what is your name bhuvaneshwari m bhuvaneshwari right yes there was a d bhuvaneshwari and we were not able to locate this m bhuvaneshwari now we are able to look
it takes time, you know, this eight days is the less time for the workshop like this, you know. Because slowly people start opening up, you know. It takes four days, five days, yes. Four days, five days, six days to open up, you know. And it is a process, you know. Slowly it starts working, you know. You are able to, you know, look into yourself, get some idea about yourself, somewhere you feel stuck, you know, and then slowly you become comfortable with so many city, people sitting around. All this is a process which is going on. Huh? So we need more time. But good, now we are able to identify M. Bhuvaneshwar is it. So how much time will it take for them to realize it may take any amount of time. Right? If we start working with ourselves, we will realize that it may take any amount of time. Because when we start working with ourselves, we realize that so much of it, you know, preconditioning we have accumulated. And we are being governed by those preconditioning, which we are not even aware of it. Same thing with the other, whether my husband or my mother-in-law or whoever it is, right? My friend. So it if I work with myself, I realize how much difficult it is for me to work for myself. And it may be equally difficult for the other. Then I'll become more patient, you know, about the other as well. Okay. Till now, we have been talking about the human being. You remember module 3, we were focusing on understanding the human being. And that is what was, you know, what we were doing till the last lecture. Now we want to switch over to this understanding nature and existence. We have already talked about it, but now we will recollect some of what we have already talked about and certain things which have to be, you know, investigated at this juncture of time. So lecture 16, we are trying to look at existence as coexistence. And if you look at the whole background, this already we have talked about, right? These three things basic human desire and how it is fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and right thought, the resolution and what this resolution is. And first part of that resolution is having clarity about right understanding. And when you say right understanding, three things, knowledge of human being, knowledge of existence and knowledge of human conduct. Till now we have been talking about knowledge of human being, right? Now we can deliberate over, over this knowledge of existence. This process of knowing is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. So to be able to see the relationship, the harmony, the coexistence. All this. Okay. Now we want to understand the existence including nature in module 4. So module 4 is basically trying to understanding the coexistence with other orders. Into we will explore into the following in this model, module through lecture 16 to 20. Existence as coexistence. Coexistence is ever present, ever effective, ever expressive. Expression of coexistence as nature, four orders. Coexistence, which is submergence, shows itself in the form of harmony, innateness and relationship, the natural characteristic in four orders. Existence can be understood by every self is perennially active. Isn't it? You are active all the time. The activity of desire, thought, expectation is taking place all the time, every moment. Does it depend upon the activity of the body? No. So, I, this self, is energized in space, right? Whether I look at the body, I don't look at the body, whether I have any transaction with the body, not have any transaction with the body, my activities are going on. Can you see that? 
very interesting thing, isn't it? Till now you thought that if you don't eat twi two times, you will not be able to think. Now you can see, you can think, you know. If you don't take food and you are, you know, stomach is empty, you tend to think more, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> when you fall sick, the body has fallen sick, what about you? Your thinking goes down? No. You continue to think, right? Second, the unit is self-organized in space. This sun is in space, this earth is in space. This earth is self-organized in space or you have to organize this earth? Self-organized in space, right? Third is, the unit recognizes its relationship with other unit and fulfills that in, in relationship in space. So if you take earth and sun, the earth is in space, it is energized in space, it is self-organized in space, it is recognizing its relationship with the sun and going around the sun. Right? All this is happening or you have to do something? All this is happening, right? And you can see this with the self also. The self is self-organized in space. Right? Have you done anything for the self to be there? Anybody has done anything for the self to be there? So self is there by way of coexistence, right? It is energized in space. It is self-organized in space. And it is recognizing its relationship with the body and fulfilling that relationship. What have you done for the body to be there? You are nurturing it after it is there. You are nurturing it after the body is there. What have you done for it to be there? It's very interesting, you know. You have not done anything for the self to be there. It is there by way of coexistence. You have not done anything for the body to be there. And you have not done anything for the coexistence of the self and body to be there. It is all given. It is all given. It has all taken place by way of coexistence. So it is all gift for you. You are a gift to yourself. Okay? You are there without doing anything for it. Can you see this? Uh, yes, but you have one doubt for me here, Vijaya. Yes. Okay, I am not doing anything, but my parents are doing something to give my body. Am I right in that sense? Yeah, but at least I'll. But at least we have not done anything. <laughs> so even you are gifted to yourself. Now, when you have not done anything for you to be there, and it is all by way of coexistence, harmony, and relationship, right? Then you can understand all that you can do is by way of coexistence, harmony and relationship because that is the way things are happening. So you think that you are very great, you know, I can do this, I can do that, right? You have not done anything for you to be there, right? You are there by way of coexistence, harmony and relationship. Can you see this? Can you understand this? Yes, everything is gifted. So don't worry, no accident will take place. Till now things have happened without you doing anything. And this is very important to understand. Bhaiya, I this have a question. Very important to understand. This is very important to understand because all this ego that you were talking about, you know, where does this ego come from? You think that you are great, you know. 
you are special and you can do this and you can do that right the moment you realize that you have not done anything for yourself to be there right you are the gift of this coexistence this harmony this relationship where will you place the ego where will you place the ego So this ego is there because we have not understood the coexistence, the harmony, the relationship, and how it expresses itself in different forms. That has to be understood, and that is what we are trying to understand now. That all that we see in the nature, in the existence, is the expression of this coexistence, this harmony, this relationship, which is already there at the base of this coexistence. right base of this existence and if we can see that then we will be able to realize that we as human being what best we can do is to understand this coexistence harmony and relationship right and live with that coexistence harmony and relationship what else can we do and that is all that is required because if you understand the coexistence have the feeling of coexistence and you are living with coexistence you are in a state of harmony and happiness every moment right your ultimate goal is naturally you know ensured so that is what we want to see in this section yes effect or yeah. is it the relatedness it is the state you may call it effect also of being in coexistence harmony and relationship see the whole existence the, is by way of coexistence harmony and relationship if i also become in line with this coexistence harmony and relationship that is fulfillment bhaiya bhaiya so you said this point your example yeah what is that pointer has to do with energized in space bhaiya it is a non living thing this pointer so what is there to get energized in space for this pointer this is not you know inactive every atom of this every molecule of this is activity or inactivity activity i mean if you look at this for example it is constituted of very large number of atoms right each atom is an activity activity in space okay okay bhaiya mm -hmm. right thank you thank you sir. in fact when you look from outside you don't feel that it is activity in fact look for you example you know somebody looks at you from outside he thinks no activity when you look inside you see so many activity no? yes <laughs> yeah at what point this self is associating with the body right from the day one of this baby formation at what point the self is getting associated with the body i mean normally uh, what the study says that when this development of the brain takes place then the self can associate with the body and normally it takes around 4 and 1/2 months for the brain to develop so that is the time um, uh, it is associating with the body but if you look at the uh, tradition and whole lot of work has been done on this and they have found that the decision for the self to associate with the body is taken much before okay and therefore you know one of the um, many of the sanskar have to do with this you know preparing on the part of the parents to invite the right kind of self you know to associate with their body that they are going to give birth to or they are going to conceive you know so even before conception okay you have to 
prepare the parents have to prepare themselves to invite the right kind of self you know to associate with the body that they are planning to conceive okay and when they have conceived you know then also there is time for you to re- you know kind of uh work to get right kind of self to be associated but that four and half months is the time when you know even the self has decided to, to associate right the proper this thing is not there you know link but, is not there so it takes almost four and half months to uh, associate with the body bhaiya when and we, once you once the self associ- is associated with the body then the mother can feel the independent movement of the body of the child you know otherwise it is all under the control of the you know mother's body if that uh, uh, i am here to understand myself still we are all in the process while inviting the other self to be associated with me is this part really required or we can work on only understanding ourselves see what is expected is that before you decide to have you know uh, kind of the baby or invite someone or even before getting married it is time that you do the self exploration you know okay <laughs> and understand yourself and you understand how to live you know a fulfilling life in one self and in relationship with others and the whole society and the whole existence that part has to be completed in the process of education and sanskar itself unfortunately it is not happening but that is supposed to be completed in fact that was expected that first 25 years of your life you should be able to complete this process of right understanding right feeling right thought and right living then you are prepared to you know develop a family okay get into this system of family where now you are inviting somebody else to come and associate with you and you take the responsibility of giving right education and sanskar to that self right so next 25 years you have to do this another 25 years you have to work for this education or this kind of system to be there in the whole society and ultimately last 25 years you have to make sure that the whole nature is you know kind of in accordance with this but unfortunately we are not giving the right kind of education and sanskar therefore this 25 years are gone without developing that competence and now we become you know we get married and we want to become parents right and we are inviting the other self without ourselves being responsible so then this question comes sir whether i am going to choose my parents or my parents are going to choose me both of you I have to decide <laughs> i i keep giving this example interesting example you know when you have a workshop like this okay after 3 4 days out of this 70 people i mean this is a i mean kind of level 3 workshop but if you look at the introductory workshops but you are also the same you <laughs> you find that out of these 60 people you make different groups whenever there is a break you know they all assemble together you know or now then they start sitting together okay how did you take that decision like minded people who search you know and you assemble together that is what is happening in this mother and son and you know daughter and all these people very unaware but you are making a selection you are making a selection um. yeah in fact um, waiting for the right associations you know 
you keep looking for right association. Body is one part of it, you know. And <laughs> but you know, you don't have to wait. Even now you can start, you know, that's what we are saying. That you can start working on yourself right now. Okay. Whatever distance you are able to travel, good. Okay. And be aware, continue to be aware, you know. So even when you are not associated with the body, you can do some work. Okay. When you get associated with the next body, you can continue with that work. Okay. But why take long time? Let's do it, you know, right in this association with the body. So that kind of important thing we are trying to do, you know. It's not just, you know, attending this EHB 3 course and, you know, teaching it. It's for my whole life, you know, the possibilities that is there in the life and to understand that possibility and to be with that possibility. Yes. Yes, Bhaiya. Yeah. Yes, Bhaiya. First, uh, uh, I'll just request you permission that whether I can speak about this. Check. First, I will request you, Baya, whether I can speak about it after that, I can. Because uh, something according to my religious things, can I? Otherwise, I will not. I will not put forth. I can move forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the things that were put up, when we are there in our mother's womb, before that it has been created, it is there on the God's hands that all our names by so and so person, you will be called by this name that has been created. According to me, I am just putting forth as God. So, you will be called so and so. There is a creator. In Tamil, we, uh, we used to tell, Padaitha varukku teriyum yadai eppadi selithuvadu endru. Our Adin Eratil, he will give us a name. So we are all talking about self, body, coexistence, everything. There is one superpower, he is there. Before our mother gives birth and before our parents, how in the society, how our parents, our grandparents, they are together, called by name. For example, take myself. I am married to Joseph. My name is Infanta. So, Infanta and Joseph are going to go ahead with the family life. <laughs> Only God can connect. That is why during the marriage, Kadavul Inaita Dai Manidan Pirika Dirkatum, Inbatilum Tunbatilum, Udal Nalatilum Sorvilum, Yek. Karanamum kundu iruvarum piriyamal irupom. That is what in Tamil, in English it is. Under any circumstances, whatever may be the huddles you are facing it, each one of us we will not go ahead, we will not get separated. And uh, this is what we take it. And uh, uh, that is what we have first baptism and then uh, stage by stage. Seven sacraments, we have it in our religious things. And eternal life. The last one, it is our eternal life. Where we are defining here, it is a self, that is a soul. It is being taken up. One of the body as a material will set away, will decay, decompose, whatever it is of the bio order, it is. So, as you were pointing, self, it is always thinking, it is living. Yeah, the soul. Soul, self, everything, it is uh, in the same meaning. Uh, so, uh, this is what we have it. Each one of us being called by the name. It's, nowadays, everyone are looking into so many things. Uh, at what uh, time he or she is born? This is the name Akash. 
A A A triple A they will give it or double A they will give it. Yeah, it matters because uh, I am from a background as per the terms. We don't believe we have belief on all those things. Every time it is good for the children, it is good for the human beings, it is good for the society, and we take all the times, whatever may be the cases, because that is what I have uh, the entire uh, system from my part. It is that is what I just uh, want to say over here. If I am wrong. I am not insisting anyone to this part. So yeah. I was just uh, uh, comparing, I was just uh, correlating it and seeing it, what it is all about. Yeah, Thank so you. the essential thing is that the existence is here and the existing existence is, you know, expressing itself and when you look at the whole expression of the existence, there are different ways to describe it. Okay. So this is described in different ways, in different you know, point of time, in different setup, right? In different language. So all those descriptions are available and they are useful descriptions, right? We may start with those descriptions, but ultimately the responsibility is on us, is on us to start with those descriptions, but ultimately see for ourselves, you know, and understand this existence, this coexistence, and see how we have to live in this existence with a fulfillment. So those who have worked on it and found something you know, they have expressed it for everyone's well-being, right? So we take it as a pro good proposal, you know, good description, but then ultimately it is we who have to f look into the reality, understand the reality, okay? And then live with that reality which ensure fulfillment for one, for all, you know, ultimately. So that is the point. So all these descriptions which are available are good descriptions useful to draw our attention, but then with that proposal, we have to look into it, understand it, be with it, and then ensure that fulfillment. That is what we are trying to say right from the beginning, that whatever is said here is also another set of proposals, which have to be verified by all of you, looked into and verified by all of you, and if you understand those things, then you have to live up to it and then check for yourself whether it is leading to a state of harmony and happiness or not. Right? That's ultimately what we, each one of us have to do. And that is why time and again we are saying it has to become the part of education so that each one of us can realize it. Right? What has happened in the past is that all these proposals which we have been put forward have been very useful at that point of time, you know, under those circumstances. But if it does not become a process of education, then they tend to become very fixed, okay, rigid. And they start losing the bearing over the time, okay. And you know, then a lot of rigidness comes, you know, and it is not able to serve as much of purpose as it was supposed to serve. So, <clears throat> essentially it has to become a part of the process of education, where every one of us can see this, understand this, realize this, okay. So, in that sense, all these religions that we have are good proposals, you know, which are trying to describe the reality in different ways. What they are trying to describe is the reality, right? And the idea is to make our life more meaningful, more fulfilling, okay? But then we have to understand it, you know. We have to understand it, we have to realize it, we have to live up to it and make our life meaningful, more purposeful, more, you know, fulfilling. 
So that is the way I look at it. You know. Yes. Yeah, can we move to the next question, I, please? I no, I will not move to the next question. I will move to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Main issue is that I am in coexistence in space. Yeah, I am in a coexistence in space. This I have to realize for myself, for others, for every unit in existence. Okay. If you look at that whole thing, this is how it looks, right? You are already acquainted with this. The existence is in the form of coexistence, which is ever present, right? So we have units, we have space, the units are submerged in space. The units are limited in size, the space is unlimited. Units are activity, they are active, space is no activity. If you look at the units, you have material units and the consciousness unit. This we saw in quite detail when we were studying about human being, right? Then in material there is recognizing and fulfilling and they are temporary in time. In consciousness we have knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling and they are continuous in time. All these descriptions we have been introduced to, right? So I am not going into the details, I am just placing it. And this ever, you know, has already been explored, I mean, can explained by Kumarji that when you say ever, it means it is continuous in both time and space, right? When you say continuous, it is continuous in time but limited in space. When you say temporary, it is limited in both time and space. All these details, okay. So the body is limited in time and space, self is limited in space but continuous in time, space is unlimited in time and space both, right? All these things you can remember. If you look at the whole existence, it is in the form of coexistence and this coexistence is ever present which means in all time, in all space, this coexistence is there. In coexistence in space, every unit is energized, self-organized and recognizing its relationship and fulfilling that relationship, we have just explained. Second thing is this coexistence is ever effective. That is principle of coexistence applies to every reality from the smallest atom to biggest the nature as a whole. So anywhere you see any unit is small or big, right? this principle of coexistence will always apply to it, you know, because that unit is by way of coexistence. Therefore, it is always working under coexistence, including human being. So every other unit is anyway working under coexistence. We human being have this, you know, uh, possibility of knowing this coexistence, right? assuming that coexistence, recognizing that coexistence, fulfilling that coexistence. That choice is there with the consciousness of human being and this choice which is already there has to be materialized by every consciousness in human being and that is ultimately what has to be done, right? I as a self has to have this understanding of coexistence, the feeling and thought of coexistence and if I have that, I am in a state of harmony and happiness. And I can express this, you know, living with coexistence with every unit. <coughs> <coughs> this coexistence is ever expressing <coughs> in the form of four orders. This we have already seen. <coughs> In these four orders, in the physical order, it is expressed from atom to heavenly bodies. In the bio order, this coexistence is expressed from cells to human body. You can see this human body, you know, trillions of cells together in coexistence, right? Not be able to count how many cells are there, but they are all together. They are in coexistence and that is how the body is there, right? Animal order, awakened to the activities of selecting and testing. 
human order awaken to the activity of selecting, testing, analyzing, imaging and it has the need to know and potential to know. All those descriptions we have already talked about. So this is how the whole existence is. Okay. All this is already completed. This has to be completed in the human order. Right. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so we'll stop here. <coughs> Break for tea. We are going to start. If our phones are in silent mode. Welcome to the day six, session two. Let me once again welcome Ganesh Ji. Namaste. So we have talked about <coughs> the building blocks, you know, one by one. And now we are talking about the building as a whole, you know. So now we can go a little faster. Because every time you go to describe about the building, you have to talk about the building blocks, right? But now that we have already talked about the building blocks, <coughs> it will be easier for us to talk about this whole thing, you know, the whole thing called existence. So, initially we were moving in a very slow speed, then we started walking and now we will start jumping. So, I have jumped to lecture number 18, you know, left 17. Okay, because uh, all that is mentioned in lecture 17 is already being talked about and it will be also included in lecture 18. Okay. So from 16 I have jumped to lecture 18. <coughs> it is self-organized, every unit is in harmony. Third thing that we are saying is that by virtue of this coexistence, by virtue of this unit submerged in space, every unit is able to recognize its relationship with other unit and fulfill that relationship. So it is in relationship. So three things. Number one, existence is in the form of coexistence. Second, the units in this coexistence are self-organized, they are in harmony. And third, unit in this coexistence are in relationship with other unit. This is what we are trying to understand in essence. Okay. Are there some more people to come? come, I have to keep waiting for you to come, you know, because in the meantime, whatever I say, whatever statement I make and you don't hear it, when you come back, you will fill it up in your own way and what you will fill up is only you know, right? So, I have to keep waiting. 
eh? will meet an accident and it will cause accidents for others. So we are trying to understand the existence okay. and three important things that we have already talked about it you know in EHB 1, EHB 2, now we are we have done so many repetition in EHB 3. So I will just place the essence of what um, is being said. What is being said is that if you look at the existence existence is in the form of coexistence which is in the form of it I don't need a slide for that. So I said three important things we are saying. Number one, existence is in the form of coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. Okay, That is one major statement. Then if you look deeper into it you find that these units are in coexistence in space and they are self organized in space right in other words they are in harmony right first the unit are in coexistence in space second the units are self organized in space they are in harmony Third is that these units are related to other units okay, in space. Okay. They are recognizing their relationship, fulfilling that relationship right, in space. So they are in relationship. These are the three basic statements. And if you look at them, that is what is being said. This natural characteristic is the unit being in relationship, innateness is unit being in harmony, coexistence is unit being in coexistence, right. So those three things that we have been talking about, right, natural characteristic, innateness and harmony uh, and coexistence is essentially saying that the unit is in coexistence in space number one the unit is self organized so it is in harmony and unit is in relationship with other unit all these three things are happening by way of coexistence or do you have to do anything for it all these three things are happening the coexistence is there, every unit is in coexistence in space, is submerged in space. Harmony is happening because every unit is in harmony in space, is self organized in space. The relationship is also happening because every unit is in relationship with other unit in space. So all these three things are already there, we have to do something about it they are already there, the coexistence is there, the harmony is there, the relationship is there. All that we need to do as human beings is to understand this existence, harmony and relationship, right? Have the feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship and live with that feeling, you know, in my relationship with other unit. That is all that is necessary to do. As long as 
coexistence, harmony, relationship is there, it is already there in existence by way of coexistence. This is the essence of what is being said from lecture 16 to lecture 20. And as a conclusion of this, what we have to do as human being is to understand this coexistence, harmony and relationship, right? And live with that coexistence, harmony and relationship, that is it. That is the essence of all that we are going to talk about in lecture 16 to lecture 20. Is this clear in essence to you? Yeah. Then we can look into the details. So every unit belonging to any of the four orders has five aspects, right? One aspect is the form, other is the property, third is the natural characteristic, fourth is the innateness and five fifth is the coexistence. This also is being talked about, right? And it has been exemplified, you know, explained with examples and all those things. <coughs> This natural characteristic, innateness and coexistence are definite, they are continuous, they are universal for any given order. So if you look at these four orders, for each order you can identify the natural characteristic, the innateness and the coexistence, right. So for four orders, there are four of them, but within the order if you see they are definite, they are continuous, they are universal. The natural characteristic and innateness of all unit belonging to any particular order is the same. They, that is innateness and natural characteristic in four orders are an expression of coexistence which is same for all units in nature. So all these, exp you know, natural characteristics and the innateness, the relationship and the harmony are finally the expression of this coexistence which is at the base. And this is same for all of them, right? The coexistence expresses itself in the form of innateness and natural characteristic in every unit of nature. That is what is happening, right? That coexistence is expressing itself in different form, right? As innateness and natural characteristic of those different orders. At the base it is coexistence, at the expression you have these details. So we will see those things now, you know. This you are already acquainted with, right? I do not have to explain this. We will add one column to it, right, to show how coexistence is expanding into all these details, right? The activity is basically talking about being energized in space, innateness is talking about being self-organized in space, the natural characteristic is talking about recognizing its relationship and fulfilling its relationship with every unit in space, right? And all these three things are by virtue of units submerged in space, right? So the activity, the innateness, the natural characteristic, they are all expression of the coexistence, right? Expression of the unit submerged in space, the coexistence. Now we want to add one column. This we have already seen. Contemplation is clarity of relationship. Understanding is clarity about the self-organization, the harmony and realization is clarity about the coexistence. This we have already talked about. So I am not spending time on that. With all this, With right understanding of existence as a whole, as we have just described in terms of realization of coexistence, we can say that it is this coexistence 
which is expressing itself in the form of activities innateness natural characteristic in four orders if you look at them one by one the basic expression of this coexistence in case of physical order is interaction if you look at the physical order <coughs> every unit in physical order is interacting with other unit in the physical order that interaction is always taking place right so if you are placing a piece of iron in the open air where there is some humidity some water right what will happen it will rust right this rusting is taking place because this iron is interacting with the air and the water okay and getting converted into ferric oxide right and you don't want if you don't want to this to happen then you have to make some arrangement so that this water air does not come in contact with the iron so the idea of painting it you know is essentially this so you have an iron door and you are painting it because you want to create an isolation between that iron piece and that air and the moisture okay if you do that then it is not rusting because then this interaction has been you know avoided so like that if you take the physical order okay one unit of the physical order is interacting with the other unit of the physical order and this is happening without you doing anything right this interaction is by way of coexistence so the coexistence is expressing itself in the form of this interaction right and it is there i mean you are not doing anything for this iron piece to interact with the water and the air right it is interacting that coexistence is you know taking care of right so this coexistence is something all these possibilities are there possibility of these activities possibility of this interaction of one unit of physical order with another unit of physical order is that clear why are here the iron gets rusted rusted so i am losing that iron so it is a loss to human being no i am having an iron door because it is getting rusted <laughs> How you are not losing that iron. You were not even having that iron. Iron was there. <laughs> that iron door. As an individual, I am talking by from my home. I am having an iron door. <laughs> yes. This ownership is declared by human being, right? <laughs> that attachment, ego. Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. What is the question? So I am losing that iron door. So it's a loss to me as an individual. I am speaking. see this iron was there by virtue of coexistence now that rust is there by virtue of coexistence where is the loss coexistence is there anywhere because of the interaction yeah so what is the loss you get my point by the friend. iron was there by way of coexistence now we have the rust by way of coexistence the coexistence continues to remain the same okay now where is the loss eh huh? i'm losing my door <laughs> i have to get another yeah. one new one so there is a loss in the door or my door that my my, my, my. Yes, my door that is important okay that we should understand if we understand the process okay 
we will do whatever whatever can be do, done for that okay so i said that if i don't want that door to rust i'll put some paint on it okay or i will make the door of wood okay and i know that this wood will you know get consumed after let's say 20 years in the meantime some tree will grow and it will give me the wood okay there is enough tree is growing okay if i understand both this process of this door which i have constructed out of wood has its lifetime because all this coexistentially you know lot of interactions are taking place so it will get consumed but then there are trees which are growing okay so if i understand both this then after every 20 years or 30 years or 40 years i can make new doors what is the problem and burn this door you know use it as a fire this thing right and that is what was done you know very common thing to do now you are not using wood to save the nature and you have started using iron which is making more damage to the nature okay iron was not produced in the nature right the wood were produced in the nature it's still being produced in the nature so if i understand this coexistence this harmony this relationship and what is happening in the process right i can work out my utilities in a process which is in line with this whole thing which is going on anyway right so some natural process is going on anyway if i understand it then i can create utilities in a manner that it is in line with the natural process right then i am not creating pollution then there is no pollution right the trees are going right a tree has a lifetime of 100 years so it will grow for 100 years then it will die right then that wood is available you can make your door you can make your you know roof you can make your floor with that right and it will last for 100 years 200 years you know that depending upon how much life it has right so if i understand these processes i can work out you know how to go about it in a very natural cyclic system you know manner mutually enriching manner right so there is no loss no gain yes the door is dying and the tree is getting you know preparing the fresh wood for you so this interaction is there and out of this interaction you can see this activity of formation and deformation right so formation deformation taking place in the iron is because of this interaction and this interaction is because of the coexistence is it clear so coexistence is leading to interaction interaction is leading to formation and deformation which is the activity of the physical order okay then you can see that out of this interaction this transformations the you know formation deformations are taking place but till that formation deformation takes place it continues to have a self organization right like iron remains like an iron piece unless it is transformed into the rust right so by virtue of this you know interaction it exist as an iron piece or it exist as a piece of rust you know 
okay so that existence is there and the composition decomposition is there by virtue of this interaction which is by virtue of coexistence similarly if you look at this pranic order the bio order okay what you see in bio order is interaction plus pulsation you know what is pulsation no if you hold your hand like this okay can you feel something pulsation this pulsation is taking place in every cell of the body right it is taking place in every cell of any bio order right and this pulsation is by virtue of the coexistence you know coexistence between different cells there is a kind of vibration you know taking place in this cell and taking place in this cell and it is this vibration which is relating one cell to the other cell so if you look at your body trillions of these cells are there each one of them is pulsating right and through that they are recognizing their relationship with other cells and that is how this such a big body is formed right and it is in harmony it is in order it is in a state of self organization without you doing anything just imagine trillions of cells are there in your body they are all recognizing their relationship with each other right fulfilling that relationship that is how your body is there you are not doing anything for the body to be there right and that recognition of relationship and fulfillment is done through this pulsation which is there by virtue of coexistence you know if you start understanding these things you will see all so much is available to you even without your knowledge all this is available right and in harmony in relationship and you are able to make right use of it without doing anything for it so trillions of cells together in relationship in harmony right making sure the self organization of the body and now that body is self organized you are doing something with the body right isn't it yeah so in the bio order you have interaction plus pulsation and this pulsation results into respiration respiration in the body is an outcome of this activity of respiration is an outcome of this pulsation every cell is you know taking something in and extracting something out and all that put together is your respiration you know you are what you are inhaling in and what you are exhaling what you are taking as a intake and what you are excreting right that is an outcome of this collective you know pulsation of every cell so very interesting so much of it happening without your knowledge without your involvement but by virtue of coexistence so if you understand this you will have lot of 
this gratitude, you know, for this coexistence. So much of gratitude for the coexistence, okay? Because so much is all available to you by virtue of coexistence without you doing anything for it, without even knowing anything for it, you know, about it. Then this expression of coexistence, which is this pulsation, is, you know, expressing itself in terms of nurturing or worsening other pranic bio-order and the growth of the bio-order. How the growth is taking place? By this process, you know, of taking in something or excreting something out by inhaling something, exhaling something, right? And that ultimately is taking place because of this pulsation, which is because of the coexistence. So the coexistence is expressing like this, and this is expressing like this. Similarly, you can expand it to the human being, you know. So if you expand it to the human being, this is how it looks like. This chart we have already understood, right, before. I have ordered only this column. Right? Only this column is added. What does this column say? It says, by virtue of coexistence, by virtue of submergence, we see this interaction in the physical order. We see this pulsation in the bio order, we see this, you know, interaction and pulsation in the body and sensation in the self, I. In case of human being, in the self, in the body it is the same. In the self, we see sensitivity in the eye and knowability in the self. So, if you look at the self of the animal, there is sensitivity. It can recognize relationship and fulfill relationship on the basis of some assumption. Human being can also do that at the level of self, but it can also know. It has the possibility to know. It has the possibility to understand. <coughs> that is knowability. That is, you know, ultimately leading to knowledge in the self. <coughs> And if you look at the human being, at the level of body, it is same as the bio-order. So, I will not explain anything. But at the level of self, if you look at human being, as long as you are operating with sensitivity in I, that is operating at the level of imagination, operating at the level of desire, thought and expectation. Right? You are not very different from the animal. You as human being has the potential to know, to understand, right? So when you start operating with this knowability, then there is a qualitative change. All this is because of the knowability. <coughs> this we have already explained, right? The human being has this yellow possibility in the self and this violet possibility in the self. As long as we are operating only with this, we are not significantly different from animal, right? That is why it is called animal consciousness. When I start operating with this possibility, then you are living like a human being, right? That possibility which is there for human being, you are able to realize it. But all this potentiality of you know, knowing is realized because of this knowability already there, right? Which is by virtue of coexistence. So, this capacity to know or the potential to know is already there in you or you have created that potential.
we as human child you know we all have curiosity to know isn't it you don't have to create the curiosity curiosity is already there you have to satisfy that curiosity every human child wants to know isn't it if you a cow giving birth to a calf just observe what happens when the calf is born in 15 minutes it is able to trace you know where to drink milk right within 15 days it learns how to graze after that it has nothing to learn no question to ask <coughs> isn't it what about the human child he will start asking question and if he answer one question another question right then 10 question <coughs> and then you have to ultimately say enough let me complete the course right <laughs> so this knowability is there by virtue of coexistence in each one of us in each of the self of human being each of the consciousness unit in human being isn't it <clears throat> you generally stop asking question because somewhere you come to think that your elders don't have answers and if you ask question they will shout okay so better not ask question okay so that curiosity remains but whenever you see the possibility of getting an answer you start asking question right isn't it that you can see for yourself <coughs> so all this that we talked about is a expression of this and this is by virtue of coexistence that so much of variety that you see in the nature is ultimately out of this coexistence expression of this coexistence so at the root at the base is coexistence and this coexistence is expressing itself in the form of interaction and ultimately knowability and that shows in different ways in this four orders and the whole nature because this is the whole nature right <coughs> can you see this so you when you expand so much of it you know so much in variety of variety in the nature when you try to condense it just a small seed seed of coexistence right when you are expressing there is creation right <coughs> at any time if there is you know condensing then you feel as if it there is a destruction right but basically what it is is the coexistence expressing itself in many ways right yes this is in essence we want to wanted to discuss in lecture 19 and lecture 20 some points for self reflection continuing with that of last session let us investigate into our own natural characteristic innateness and coexistence that is submerged 
explore as to what which feeling is natural for you in your relationship with other human being feeling of affection or jealousy respect or disrespect and so on <coughs> explore as to what is natural feeling for you in your relationship with your body feeling of nurturing or exploitation protection or otherwise right utilization or misuse of the body also check whether your interaction with the body is in line with it or not third explore as to what is natural feeling for you in your relationship with physical facility feeling of enrichment or exploitation protection or otherwise right utilization or misuse also check whether your work with physical facility is in line with it or not all this relates to you right but this is based on that understanding you know if we understand this you can rightly decide what feeling in relationship with other human being what behavior what work you know is natural what is not natural so these are the question related to your being right this is the description related relating to your existence the human existence or the existence as a whole if you understand this you can define your role properly what you have to do with yourself what you have to do with your body what you have to do with the physical facility right can you understand that properly yeah ha ah. this is talking about the activity that is taking place activity taking place in one unit and the other unit okay so for example <coughs> this iron piece is combining with oxygen and water right this is an activity taking place right what is the outcome rust outcome is the rust is formed okay right okay bhaiya that so is clear the composition of rust has taken place decomposition of iron iron has taken place decomposition of water has also taken place understood right so that shows as the participation of this water with respect to the iron okay so this is describing about the participation and this is describing about the activity that is taking place in that process of participation so this is taking place because of this this is taking place because of this this is taking place because of this ultimately what is there at the root coexistence the submergence so if you really look at this coexistence and understand that coexistence we'll see everything is related to everything no isolation no division right when you say understanding the truth means understanding this coexistence when you understand this coexistence you see that you are related to everybody right when you have this feeling of relationship for everybody that is what is love and if you are related to everybody and you have that feeling then you will live with that relationship with everybody right or at least think of living with relationship with everybody that is compassion right so truth love and compassion you know will emerge out of this understanding can i see can we say and that this is what every religion is trying to say right understand the truth have the feeling of love and live with compassion with every unit of this existence right 
every creature living, you know, every unit living or non living, isn't it? Ganeshi, can we say that uh, love is the expression of coexistence? Love is the feeling based on the understanding of this coexistence. Compassion is the expression outside. Okay. So, love is the feeling in me which I express as compassion for everyone around. So, so yeah. So, uh, probably we can have this feeling of love only completely when we realize coexistence. Exactly. That is what we are saying every time we are drawing that picture, you know. Realization of coexistence, understanding of harmony and contemplation of relationship. So, that feeling of relationship will come in completeness only when it comes down from that understanding of coexistence. That is why it is essential for you to go right up to that realization. Then from there when you come down, you see it is all very natural now, very automatic for you. You are not doing some favor, <coughs> some favor for the other. <coughs> you know that that is the way things are. It. Isn't it? <coughs> so, you are not doing some favor for others. You are not doing social work. <coughs> it, is, it is an existential reality. The whole existence is in the form of coexistence. With that coexistence, every unit is in harmony, every unit is in relationship. I, as human being, as self, also, you know, with that realization of coexistence, I am also in harmony and I am in relationship with everyone. That is the feeling of love. This is the kingdom of God, right? Call it by any name. You know. Then you have happiness, continuity of happiness. Everything is added unto you. Now you don't have to get anything, you know, in addition. If that realization of coexistence takes place, <coughs> then understanding of harmony will follow, the feeling of relationship with everyone will follow. Then you will have this feeling of love for everyone. Then all your imagination is filled with that, you know, how to live with relationship, with you know, love with everyone. All your actions are guided by that. So, you have that compassion. So, all that will come. If you have the understanding of coexistence, realization of coexistence, everything will be added unto it. Then you are not left with any problem. And interestingly, nothing less will do, you know, every one of us have to reach there. And Ganesh, by, um, so by units being what, being in the space, this coexistence, the submergence, human order has this potential to know, knowability. So, it needs a conducive environment to know that. Yeah, <coughs> it needs conducive environment. It also needs guidance from the previous generation, right? And that is the purpose of education in Sanskar. The right education and sanskar is expected to provide right kind of environment, number one, right kind of proposals to be given, right, and proper guidance has to be given so that each child, you know, who has an inquisitiveness to know, right is able to listen to those right proposals, right, explore within, practice it 
and if he is he has any confusion he can ask question and clarify right that is one thing but even before that when he presumes that the elders are always right and he is going by that assumption and following you imitating you if you have the right understanding right feeling right thought and right action then all that is he is learning by way of imitation by way of following you by way of the discipline given by you he will be able to do what is right right and then when he is trying to explore himself if you provide the right kind of proposal and right kind of guidance and the environment he will be able to understand the reality himself right he will be able to go right up to that realization of coexistence and then come down to understanding of harmony and contemplation of relationship if that happens then now he is comfortable now he is safe you have done your part of the job now the child has this clarity in him he has that feeling in him and he can live with that feeling you know within himself as well as with everyone else it has to not stop with one individual because he is following the society and other human beings so it has to spread to all human beings generation after generation then only continuity of this is possible yes rajul ji keeps saying that i want i keep doing this because i feel that if i dissociate with this body and associate with this murder body next lifetime i must have a conducive environment you know <laughs> i must <laughs> so i must prepare it before i leave this body you know everywhere if this environment is available then i'm safe otherwise i am in risk isn't it that is the responsibility on each and every one of us and interestingly what else will you do if you understand this coexistence harmony and relationship what else will you do except this homework we can move on to the next this thing rajul ji 90 i have a question like uh, to be in the state of super bliss like uh, seeing the eternity like saints or like uh, uh, rishis they have to activate seven chakras like uh, seven chakras they have to activate one by one so that they'll reach the realization state and so far i believe that it is something happening in the body i never tried for even one chakra but then <coughs> i thought that uh it is all uh, things that is happening in the body but how, uh, now i could realize that it is the realization of the self which is going to happen in one self to reach that particular state am i right by it it's, it's like uh, first we have to work on with happiness then peace then satisfaction then bliss and super bliss like that it is going to happen in the chakras also am i right by you i will respond in a minute like it it will be a long process but mm -hmm. it, it the process is the same or different <coughs> see as i was thinking you know if you look at the tradition we have a long tradition you know all over the world where people have tried to understand human being try to understand the purpose of human being and how that purpose can be realized and they have come up with different ways of expressing their solutions you know that they got same case is happening you know almost all the places including in india so in india if you see many such approaches have been defined and this is one of them that you are talking about you know and one of the essence of this system is that you are not just the body okay the body is there but the self is the also there and there is a way in which this self connects to the body okay so lot of you know kind of exploration was made about this interaction between the self and the body okay 
and what kind of interaction will take place depending upon the status of the body and depending upon the status of the self. Right? And how you can move from the lower status to the higher status of the self and therefore the body or vice versa. So a lot of this work was done, you know. So I will not get into those details. But I would say that it is one system which is trying to help you understand that you are not just the body but you are also the self and some interaction between the body and the self is taking place and you have to raise the status of your body as well as the status of your self. Right? You are telling about meditation, Ult Bhaiya. Ultimately, like no, I am talking about chakra that you were talking about. Mm -mm -mm. right? Ultimately, it is said that when you have the highest, you are at the highest level of chakra, there you can realize the space, you can realize the, you know, coexistence. That realization can take place at the level of self, not at the level of body, of course. So, all the different descriptions are there. Even there also the body is used as an instrument uh, to realize, that, uh, re realize the self. Yeah, it is used as an instrument and it says that, you know, certain process can be done with the body and it will facilitate that process in the self. So all those details and many things, you know, if you look at this uh, systems which have been developed and it is this case in the whole over the world, but in India also this case is there, you know, different ways of making this traveling, you know, this journey possible. And people have explored it, they have set up traditions, then, you know, for thousands of years it has been there, right. But ultimate purpose is this, okay. Thank you, Bhaiya. Uh, and they, they did all this and they brought it into the education, right. But that generalization has not taken place, right. Now we should make sure that it it goes to everyone, you know. Everyone can do it with the you know, mainstream education. Yeah. We understood that the material units get composed and decomposed. That is there. But the conscious units don't do that. They always exist. Is there a possibility that the conscious units can fall back to the category of material units and material units can grow up to the level of conscious units. Is there any process or possibility? I mean, if you ask yes, no, I will say no. Okay. But if you say why no? No, no, I am not asking why no. If there is no, then there I is am, another I, question. I am coming to that. <laughs> I am saying, what is the main issue? Now that I am consciousness, right? I have to find out what I have to do. Or do I have to worry whether I am getting converted back into material or not? Okay. <laughs> what is the issue? No, issue is there, Vaya. Uh. The issue is, if the number of conscious units is fixed, it is constant, then how the population is increasing? Uh, this is what I am saying. This kind of curiosity, no? <laughs> I mean, I can always give answers to this. I can say that, you know, you are killing all these animals, okay? What is that self doing now? It is. It has started running this human body. So for that, you don't have to, you know, uh, have this idea that a new uh, self have to be formed. You can see, you know, so many animals are being killed. Okay. Now there is enough number of selves who can start, you know, associating with the animal body. So if the population of the human beings are increasing, there is no worry about it because that. So much of supply is there. But those are not the real time issue, I would say. The real time issue is for me, given that I am a consciousness, okay, and I want to be, you know, in a state of continuous happiness, what do I do? Yeah, isn't it? That is the real issue. But those issues can be answered. I am not 
Very hey, animals are dying and human beings are also getting perished. Human bodies are also getting perished. But ultimately, ultimately the number of conscious units, that should remain fixed. Na? That there may be an interchange between the human body who, or animal. Who is going to count this? I mean, very difficult thing. You know, <laughs> and you know, this, that this is not the only earth where human beings are there, right? If you look at the galaxy, such a big, you know, few lakhs or crores of uh, earth may be there where these selves are associated. And then there are places in the space where you have self without the body because self is anyway not dying, right? Now, there is a lot of coming here and there. Now, how do you keep track of all this? You know, at least I find it very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this USB content is stimulating us to ask those kind of ah, questions. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, we are very peaceful in our own state of being. <laughs> See, I am very purposefully trying to bring all these points that all these curiosities are there. But then, what are the you know, uh, things which, of, which are of immediate concern, which can be explored, right? And you can, we can get answer to that and we can live up to it and verify. That is very important for me because my basic concern is that it should come to the mainstream education. If that happens, then it is going to be liberating for all of us. Right? So every time I try to bring it to the points which can be looked into, explored, verified by each one of us, okay, and can be transformed from, transferred from one generation to the other generation. If you ask other questions, I somehow not promote them very much, you know, because otherwise it becomes, you know, very open-ended and you get lost most of the time. Uh, Ganeshi, one question. Yes. Uh, we say that this is uh, one of the path for realization. Yeah. And uh, as Didi was also mentioning about chakras and all, there may be other methods. Maybe uh, bhakti may be considered to be another path of realization. So is it like uh, 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 that some people will be aligned uh, to the path of the knowledge and some other people might be aligned uh, more? Uh, aligned to uh, some other path which may be conducive for them, which may be better for them to the path of realization, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll... I'll this is an important question. <coughs> I'll come to this. Okay, this is 12, 10. Uh, Okay, I, I'll just briefly discuss about this, you know, and then come back to your question, you know. It will need some time to respond. <coughs> See, the question now is that given all this, what I do as a human being, right? So, all this is given, we have discussed. And if you have the clarity of all this, this is the you know, description of the clarity that I have and on the basis of that, the thought and the expectation, the way it will look like, all these are discussed. <coughs> then you will see, in a sense, that given all this, I as a human being, when I am looking at the coexistence, <clears throat> how will it look like me, to me, you know? Now we want to understand how existence or coexistence is seen by the self and how space is seen by the self, depending upon activation of its higher and higher activities. <clears throat> when you start observing <coughs> the nature, and the existence. 
you see to begin with is the you see the units right and in units also you generally see this form of the unit right the shape size of the unit okay isn't it like when i say this you look at the shape of this unit right that is how you identify an unit okay then <coughs> if i say what is this so you'll say two units right one here one here okay is that clear yes now if i say that units are in coexistence in space right so unit is there the space is there right and the unit is in space if you are looking at it in on the basis of the form the shape size and so on how will you look at the space now in this the gap the distance yeah so you look at it as the gap between the two units is that clear yes, yes. so at the level of selecting and testing where we are looking at the form we see the coexistence as two units with gap void in between right is that clear very interesting same reality right same reality okay this we were seeing as two different units having different form then i said these units are in space and you started paying attention to it and now you can see the void in between and the units right in fact only when there is void in between <coughs> these are two units if this void is you know not there now it is one unit or two unit one unit right so you see two units only when there is a void between them you know in between the two yeah <coughs> so vision of the eyes but vision of the self now if you include okay and if you can see or imagine that even when they are put together right there is still gap between the two then you can see that there are two units isn't it now that once you have seen this you know there are two units and if i am putting together if you are seeing only on the basis of eyes you may feel that there is no gap but now self knows that there is a gap in between right so for you there are two units for the eyes there may be still one unit right isn't it so all this you have to start you know you will be able to see how it goes <coughs> then when you are looking at it at the level of selecting and testing and you are looking at the form that is the kind of conclusion you will draw now suppose you have started looking at it at the level of analyzing and comparing right at the level of thought okay now you look at the sun look at the earth okay how far they are very far very far but you can feel the effect of the sun on earth on the trees on your body right skin of your body right yeah so this effect of the sun is reaching to your body right 
and there is space in between. As long as you do not pay attention to the space, fine. You know, there is sun, there is your skin, your body, you know. But now, if you start looking at this coexistence, you would realize that <coughs> this coexistence of units in space, in that what is happening is that effect of the sun is reaching to the body, which is so far away, right? So this space now is not something very simple like absence, right? Two units with effect of one unit on another unit. So coexistence is two units, right, which are parallel, but effect of one is reaching to the effect of the to the other, you know. So now it is not just a void, it is not an absence, it is a presence, this space is a presence in which the effect of one unit in this end is reaching to the other unit. Interesting, isn't it? Now this space is not something neutral, something like absent. It is a reality in which there are two units and if these two units are there, effect of one unit reaches to the other unit. So now you start feeling that you are not in isolation. Previously you thought that you are in isolation because there is gap in between, void in between. Now you see that you are not in isolation. The space is something through which effect of one unit is reaching to me. Effect of my is reaching to someone else. Third, when you are operating at the level of contemplation, you can see that not only the effect of one is reaching on the other, but there is a relationship, relationship of mutual fulfillment between one and the other. Now your space is becoming more important, you know. It is becoming a reality in which one unit is related to the other unit. So not that you have to make relationship. The relationship is there by virtue of the units being in space. I have to understand the reality, accept this, you know, understand this relationship and accept that relationship rather than create that relationship. Sir, uh one question, the, when we are talking about another unit, so is it when they come in contact that effect uh, is there? Otherwise, if the two are in isolation, then no, like… Where is the isolation? That is so, the problem. No, they are both are in space. Let us say a mobile and this bottle. So unless they come in contact with each other, there is no effect on each other. No, no, sun That is what we cannot see, rather. Sun and your skin, they are not in contact. They are so far away. And yeah, but that, we can sense that. That yeah. sensation, but here, these two units, both in material, uh, physical unit, uh, physical they are order. Also, they are also, when you place, you know, lit a fire, and put some utensil on it. Yeah, so unless they come in contact with each other. The fire is there, the, uh, your okay. uh, cooker is there, you know, there is a distance in between. Still the effect of the fire is reaching to the cooker. Even if that fire is not physically reaching there, mm -hmm. its effect is reaching to the cooker, isn't it? So mm -hmm. unless we are able to see that, uh, it will remain as assumption for us. It will remain? As assumption. Because if I see this mobile and this bottle, water bottle, there there is a gap and I don't, I am not able to see the effect on each other. Yeah. You are not able to see that that station which is transacting with your mobile is far away and there is no direct between the two. You are connecting, you know, to this station, mm -hmm. 
between you and the, the mobile and the station, there is no direct connection. There is space in between. Okay. But there is a connection. Here also we are looking at the screen, whatever is written there, but we are not in direct physical touch with the screen, but still it is having an impact upon us. Yes. Baya, in space, hmm? uh, to self, for example, myself as self of Infanta and Vijayaraghavan sir, self, to self, whether both of them will be able to identify that it is the self of the one. Identification will be there in space. Yeah. <clears throat> known. All the selves will be known to the other selves. Yeah. See, <clears throat> the reflection of one unit is already there in the other unit. Okay. Only thing is that the units may be gross or it may be subtle, right? If you are trying to see this some unit, depending upon the grossness or subtleness of that unit, you have to have the capacity to see that subtleness or grossness. So with the eyes, if I want to see or through the eyes I want to see, then I can see only gross things, right? But the self has the capacity to see a very subtle things. Right? So, as you develop your capacity of this self, you can see subtler and subtler things. Right? So, you can see the other self being reflected in you at the level of self. All those possibilities are there. All those possibilities are there. Okay. okay. Let, then, if I go little deeper at the level of contemplation I am able to see the relationship and I am able to see the space as something which is basic of basis for relationship and I am able to see the coexistence as units in relationship. Is that clear? If I go deeper at the level of understanding I can see the harmony. I can see that a unit is in harmony and it is in harmony being in space. So, an unit is self-organized in space, is in harmony in space. In that case, I can see this coexistence as self-organization in an unit and I can see the space as something you know, in which every unit is self-organized. So now space is something more than this, you know, for what it was before. Now I can see that space is something in which every unit is self-organized, every unit is in harmony. And the whole existence, coexistence, if I see it means unit self-organized in space. That is the coexistence for me now. And if I go still deeper, to the level of realization, I can see that unit is submerged in space. I can see the whole existence as coexistence, right? So I can directly see the space. I can see the unit. I can see the unit submerged in space. I can see that unit submerged in space is in harmony and is in relationship with other units. So all those things I can see. This is the range of my seeing things. Right? And depending upon how deeper I am looking at, how subtler I am looking at the reality, right? I am able to see this existence, this coexistence at different levels, right? Bayam. So, starting from this, I can go on, you know, and look at the existence, the coexistence in a subtler and subtler manner, you know, in a deeper and deeper manner. And that um, okay. I'm happy. <coughs> I can also see this space. So at the level of selecting and testing, I see the space as a void, as a gap, as an absence. 
at the level of analyzing and contemplating i see this as medium for transfer of effect from one unit to the other unit at the level of contemplation i see it as a reality in which relationship is ensured for every unit with another unit at the level of understanding i can see that space is a reality in which harmony is ensured for every unit and realize at the level of realization i can see that you know space is a reality in which coexistence is ensured for every unit in existence so for me now space some become something very you know important something very you know effective thing in this whole existence and the coexistence becomes this and if i can see these two things then i can see that the whole existence is in coexistence is in harmony every unit is in harmony every unit is in relationship with other unit right there is no isolation you know there is no lack of relationship only thing that needs to be done by me is to understand this coexistence harmony and relationship and have the feeling for it have the thought for you know coexistence harmony and relationship and live by that coexistence harmony and relationship with every unit that is what i have to do ultimately as a human being right so with this the points for self reflection is investigate into your natural characteristic being in relationship inertness being in harmony and coexistence being in coexistence right that is feeling in relationship state of happiness submergence in space investigate your living is centered around the activities of selecting where is you are centered this 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 or this or ultimately this these are the five activities and you ask yourself where you are centered right same question if you remember we were asking right 7 to 6 to 1 consider any unit and try to see all five aspects of the unit that is form property and so on right also try to observe the activity of the self that is involved in seeing a particular aspect of an unit investigate you are able to see the coexistence submergence until which activity of the self investigate you are able to see the space until which level of activity of the self so all this you have to explore you know which will give you an idea as to what is the level of your you know observation level of your seeing okay yes now i can come back to the question i have a doubt like in the activities of selecting and tasting we say that the two units are with a gap when when i see by myself can i say that the smallest building block of a unit for example the atom with respect to myself can i consider the atom as a unit because there will be space between two atoms since it is submerged in space this unit is made up of atoms the basic building blocks and this is submerged in space so there will be space between the atoms too so the unit can be an atom can you consider that unit is an atom and if you there is space in between the sub particles you know of Half atom, the atom. Yeah. then even though sub particles have to mm-hmm. be considered as unit mm-hmm. yes so ultimately you have to go to the smallest unit you know bhaiya you said two units one unit has an effect on another unit now let us take this example of pillow and chair what is the effect of one unit on another when they are at this distance see you it may not be observable for you right 
but there may be some effects which we are not able to observe any guess bhaiya no for example the moon and the sun yeah that example we keep hearing but if you see from the earth okay that you can see that there is some effect of the sun on the moon and if the moon comes in between the sun and the earth we are not able to see this sun right okay now this effect that when the moon comes in between we cannot see the sun is not visible to you till that you know moon comes in between the sun you think that you can sun you can see the sun whether the moon is there or not there what is the effect of it but at one time it was not observable now it is observable for you but the effect is already there similarly the sun has reflection on the moon and the moon has reflection on the yes. earth right that effect is already taking place in the day time you are not able to observe in the night time you are able to observe but then it does not mean that there is no effect so all these effects are there because relationship is always there so there are effects only thing is whether it is visible not visible thank you bhaiya got it bhaiya only one doubt both the things need not to be energized bhaiya if it is energized there will be a link if both the things are not energized so we can assume there will not be any link yeah but you know fortunately or unfortunately there is no unit existence is not energized because all units are activity therefore all of them are energized in space so all the units are energized so the link is possible though it is very nearby or far away that link, way we can link is already there okay the effect is also there only thing is that that effect may be visible to me or may not be visible to me ganesh ji can we see the whole existence as a single unit whole existence as a single unit yeah i mean i will not say unit you can see the whole existence as one fundamental reality okay when you say reality it includes the unit as well as the space which is not an unit so the whole existence is the coexistence of unit in space so i will say the whole existence is one fundamental reality in which we have space and the units right and this is inseparable the units and space are inseparable they are together in coexistence that is what best we can say sir here here already talk to units in solid state you know we easily separated but in case of sodium chloride is added to the water one solid unit another one is liquid phase so we can get the liquid phase sodium chloride solution here unable to see the sodium chloride in the solid state itself we can get the sodium chloride solution here what is the space you know if you look at the sodium for example right if you look at the sodium chloride okay where is it in space number 1 number 2 if you look at the sodium atoms right there is so much of space in between two sodium atoms if you look at this inside the sodium atom you will find that the sodium atom consists of so many sub particles right you 
keep talking about 11 electrons, you know, and put together. Proton, and neutron. There is space in between them also. So, sodium is not a solid thing, okay. There are so many electrons and protons and there is space so much of in between. All there, the space is there, isn't it? Sir, uh, okay. each so unit. So I'll some ah please. Yeah, each unit is uh, made up of several units. So there is possibility of having one smallest unit. Okay, uh, when it comes to the material, consciousness itself is a one unit. So consciousness is not made up of several units. So when it comes to the consciousness, there is a unit. But the material is the unit of units, but possibility of having a smallest material unit. That smallest material unit could also be a consciousness unit. So, I mean, when we look into the existence, this existence is of just two reality. The one reality is the space and the other rea reality is the consciousness. If we go to that smallest unit of material, then this question is there. Yeah, in fact, you know, here instead of talking of units, it is better to talk about the activity. Then we can handle it better. We have the subtle most activity and we have the gross activities. Right? For example, the self, consciousness is also an activity and this body is also an activity. Activity seems to be, this body seems to be much gross activity as compared to the self which is relatively subtle than the body. Right? Now if you look at the self, self consists of still subtler activity. We can see these five activities in the self, right? Five plus five, ten, or rather, you know, if you look at the state and the dynamic activity, at least five levels of these activities we can see. That means the consciousness is not one activity, right? It is constituted of subtler activity than this. So we have to go to those subtle most activities, right? of which this consciousness unit is constituted. Similarly, when you go to the material unit, these material units are also constituted of the subtle activities, right? And when you go to the subtle most, okay, we will say that this gross unit, material unit is constituted of those subtle most activities. For example, in uh, the world of science today, it is saying that if you look at this sodium material, you know, atom, it is constituted of some sub particles, which are subtler than the atom, okay. whether you want to call them in terms of proton and neutron and things like that, or you want to call them in terms of quanta, you know. But there are sub-particles, okay. So this atom is not really the ultimate particle. No? It is composed of the, you know, still smaller particles called sub-particles. So we have to go to that subtle most activity. When we go to that subtle most activity, then we can see that this material unit is made of those subtle most activity. And these consciousness units are also made of that subtle most activities. The basic difference is that when this composition is formed of this subtle most activity, in case of material, the structure is temporary. In case of consciousness, the structure is, you know, continuous. Okay. That is how it will appear. 
and then this subtle activity is further combining to make more and more gross activities right and that's how this whole nature is so that's the kind and all this is subtle most, acti most activities are in space so one subtle most activity in space another subtle most activity in space put together they are forming a gross, gross activity and it goes on building up so we have these trees and you know big mountains right one human being a family of human being you know, society of human beings all these larger units are being formed but ultimately we have to trace some subtle most activity at the base call it some smallest particle you know, base level but it is better to see them as activity. To see them as unit, these units are made of, you know, other activities or subtler activities. So if you see them in directly in terms of activities, you have the range of subtle most activity to gross most activity. Somewhere you can trace it as an unit, depending upon what is the subtleness of your observation or grossness of your observation. But yeah, subtle subtleness of the subtleness of the activity in the self at one point will it stay as no activity in the space, like in its completion point? No, the no activity is the space. The activity is always composed of activity however subtle or gross it may be. So what will be it the... It is not composed of no activity. So what will be the completion point of the self? Ultimately, if you see, this pure observer is an activity which is subtle most activity with full expression of its potential. So that pure observer is one which has the highest potential. You know, it can see all things around without you know assumption you can see things as they are and it can also see the space so that is the highest you know expression of that subtle most activity and from there you can see that other activities whether they are subtle activity subtle most activity or gross activity those possibilities are there at the level of self that is at the level of your observer that is why every time we are asking you this question, where you are, you know, even within this self, what is the center of your being? If you are centered at the level of your observer, then you have the likelihood of seeing the subtle most activity and therefore all the gross activities which are made of this. I have a question pending with uh, uh, Deepesh ji. And I have 15 minutes, so I'll take around five to ten minutes responding to the PSG. But before that, I can ask answer some question. Yes. By uh, with this uh, continuation to the smallest unit of the material, as Omesh Bhai asked. So, as far as the activities of the material which we give as formation and deformation, we are we sure that that is the subtlest activity of the material unit? Yes. No. No, we are not saying that. We are saying composition, decomposition is taking place, which means when it is decomposing means from a grosser unit, you know, we have gone to relatively subtler unit. When composition is taking place, we are going from relatively, you know, subtler unit to grosser unit. But it is relative, you know, with each other. That is not the subtle most activity, yes. So, in that case, uh, the subparticles of the atoms, so we may not be sure what is the subtlest activities of those subparticles. So, if that continues to be continuous in time, hmm. since we are not aware of that, if that activity is going to be continuous, so in such a case, won't it be a contradiction with the consciousness unit? You know, these are interesting questions which have to be looked into. 
and there is a lot of scope for research. Yes. Yeah, I am telling this very seriously that science has limitations of going subtler and subtler because science is using the instruments which are gross in nature. And you cannot see anything subtler than the instrument itself. Okay. But when you use your own self as the observer, then you can see subtler things. Right? So, lot of possibility of doing research on the basis of you directly being the observer rather than using the instrument as an, you know, means to observe. That's one thing. Even within the self, we are saying that pure observer is the highest level of your, you know, capacity to observe. So, when you are seeing from that pure observer, you can see things much subtler. And what is being said is that there, from there you can see even the subtle most thing, you know, subtle most activity. But whether you are, can really do it, not do it, all these are area of research. First do the self-exploration and make it an area of research, you know. And if you are able to do this, put it properly that yes, this is how I can see. For example, if I do this self-exploration, I can see for myself which feeling is naturally acceptable to me, which feeling is not naturally acceptable to me. This cannot be decided by any instrument other than this pure self, <coughs> pure observer. This much at least we can prove, right? Do all this research, lot of it to be done. Which is your area? <coughs> area of my research, my eh? uh, I am I am working with optical communication. Yes. Optical means capacity to see, isn't it? What I feel at this point is there may be a possibility of having one more unit other than material and consciousness. Maybe. Um, since you said that. Yeah. Ultimately, we have to find what is the subtle most activity. Right? So, one is the space which is no activity. <coughs> the other is the subtle most activity. <coughs> and this <coughs> activities together are forming grosser and grosser activities. So, we will have to do this experiment. And I am saying that this experiment cannot be done by gross instruments. Ultimately, it has to be done at the level of self and there also at the level of pure observer. That is the question. Yes. <laughs> Maya, actually, uh, this is regarding Dibesh Bhaiya question. That I think it is related. Yes, I am going to answer to that question. But yes, you can ask actually, question. my question is, we have one poet called Thiruvalluvar. Okay, he is a saint. He is not related to any religion. Okay, totally there are 1330 kurals that is applicable to all the human being in the universe. It is called as Ulaga Pudumare in Tamil. Okay, that saint, when he is contemplating, that is, he is participating, he has relation with all the human being, nature. In that way, he is able to write all that in words. Totally, it will be having only seven words. Okay, that will be related to all Okay, whatever it is there in nature, what we are speaking, existence is coexistence, everything will be there in that Tirukural. Okay, in that case, that is, uh, he has one, uh, written one Kural, Devatal Aga Deninum Muyarchi Tan Meivarutta Kulitarum. That is, whatever effort we are doing, okay, even God has nothing has to do with. That is effort, it, effort is important. I am able to link with this. First day, we have started with self-development. There, 
that self development itself is a effort therefore even god has nothing to do with that when we are not able to put any effort the first kural out of 1330 the first kural start with tamil ka கற்க கசடர கற்பவை கற்றப்பின் நிற்க அதற்கு தக த சேம் ஐ எம் ஏபிள் டு ரிலேட் வித் திஸ் யூஹெச்வி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வி நீட் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் எவ்ரி திங் அண்ட் தென் வி நீட் டு லிவ் அக்கார்டிங்லி தெர் ஃபோர் தட் ரியலைசேஷன் பட் ஹி ஹஸ் நாட் கிவன் த வே வாட் யூ ஆர் கிவிங் தேர் ஃபோர் வி ஆர் நாட் ஏபிள் டு மேக் தேட் இன் அவர் லிவிங் வி ஹவ் ஸ்டடீட் இன் எயித் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டென் குரல் 9th standard 10th tirukural 10th standard uh, 10 that count has been increased starting from uh, first standard second standard we have studied tirukural all the people in tamil nadu we have the tirukural even i am getting from my friends uh, group even in gindi group a city gindi group udaya prakash sir uh, five days we have attended uhv still i think sunil bhaiya he will be knowing it and that he is also there in the group every day he will be posting one tirukural with meaning for us because when we are reading that tirukural it will be relating more with what we are listening here okay it has have that coincidence is that tiruvalluvar he has related with all the units in this universe and he has written with that he is like god only that is more than god because he has given the statement devathal agadeninum but he has understood that no that effort human being has to take i will write now at least i am not there my my sentence whatever i have written that will reach to the people let them realize and let them um, think that existence is coexistence is our both question it is related to that Thank you, Baya. I have been telling right, time and again that all great people okay, have tried to understand hmm? tried to understand this harmony, this coexistence, this relationship and when they have understood it, they have tried to live up to it and they have tried to communicate to the people you know in their own way depending upon the time the space the culture the language you know so those expressions are different but in essence this is what they are been trying to you know say and what we are doing we are not creating something new you know we are only collecting it from that vast of you know knowledge which is available the effort that we are trying to make is that this should become the part of mainstream education rather than being it you know making it available to a selected few right if it can be made part of mainstream education then it will reach everywhere and it can go generation by generation one good thing has happened in the society today is that we have made the access of education to everybody in a very large manner almost every child is going through 12 years of 20 years of education you know in 12 years we can get all this you know transfer to every child that is possible so that's all that we are doing otherwise you will find this everywhere you know everywhere you know i like when we were conducting this workshops in punjab you know many of them said that now we can understand you know uh, guru granth sahab you know and guru nanak in a much better way than we were understanding it before right yeah bhutan you know people said that we have been the followers of buddhism but now we can understand buddhism better so what we are saying is not something very different or something very new but only thing is that we are saying that they wanted us to understand all that right instead of trying to understand and live up to it we have made some symbols out of them and you know 
kind of freeze them. No? Now let us try to understand them, okay, what they are trying to say. And when we understand, we try to live up to that. Okay. Uh, before closing, I will respond to Deepesh's question. Deepesh's question was, can you repeat your question? Actually, I was asking like there are, this is one of the path, maybe we get the path of knowledge which we are trying to reach the state of realization. So I was asking like, are in there other paths like Bhakti Yoga, maybe the uh, Tantras or other techniques. So isn't like some people may be aligned to some particular techniques. So will it be more easy for them to uh, find the paths which are <coughs> No, uh, which is aligned to them for the achieving a realization. Yeah. So, if you look at this, you know, human conduct, okay, one is this part, B1, other is B2, third is this, you know, your behavior, work and participation in the larger order. If all of us sitting here, if we start asking ourselves, where is the focus of my being to this date? That question I was asking, you know, what is the center of your being? You ask that question to yourself, okay? You can find out whether your focus goes here, here or here. If your level of, you know, uh, being or is focused around the physical experience in you know, outside world, what I am doing outside, what I am getting from outside, right, what I am giving outside, you are a good candidate for karma yoga, right. If your focus is on this, your feeling, your thought, right? Then you have to work with Bhakti Yoga. If your focus is on to know, to understand, then Jnana Yoga. So, at one time when a whole lot of this work was being done in Indian tradition, they said, Ultimately, you have to go from below to the top and from top to the down, you have to come. But when you are beginning, where do you begin? If your focus is here, if you are living at a very gross level, begin with this. If you have developed some level of you know, subtlety and you are, for you feeling and thought have become important, start with this. If you have still become subtler, then you can start with this. So, depending upon your level of development, okay, they started prescribing, you know, where, how to start, where to start, okay. So, if you are gross most, then karma yoga will be the <laughs> prescription for you. If you are operating at this level, bhakti yoga is the prescription for you. If you, have operated, if you are operating at this subtle level, then probably Jnana Yoga is, your, is the prescription for you, right? Like that so many possibilities were work, was worked out. And there is one interesting character, you know, Goraknath, you heard of him? No, Goraknath you have not heard? Gorakhpur you have heard? Yes. Gorakhpur is the place which is named after Goraknath. You know? Goraknath. Huh? This man was so specific that if somebody comes to him, he will take time to study through him, find out all the details of his level of the self and depending on that, he will give some prescription as to what he should do okay, as a practice. So, hundreds of people will come to him and, you know, he will give some, you know, route to work on, some practice. 
when these people went out and started cross, you know, checking, cross-checking with each other as to what he said to you, <laughs> then they found that he has said different things to different people. Right? And these people got confused. Right? There was no confusion in the mind of Goraknath because he thought that given this state of the man, this is what he should do. When they started checking among themselves, they found that he has prescribed different things to different people. And it created so much of confusion that in Uttar Pradesh, this word Gorak Dhanda, you know, is used as a synonymous to confusion. <laughs> Gorak Dhanda means very difficult to understand what you are doing, you know. Okay, all lot of confusion. But there was no confusion in the mind of the Goraknath, you know. But people to whom he was recommending specific practices, it created a lot of confusion in the mind of these people. Okay. So that kind of detailing was being done. You know? And if you study Gita, for example, Gita is trying to somehow explain all this, you know. Said, you know, this is same Gita, the Karma Yoga is same as Bhakti Yoga, is same as Jnana Yoga, and same as, you know, uh, Raja Yoga, and so many things he is saying. And Arjun, to whom he is saying, every time he is getting confused. And he says, You tell me one of them, you are confusing me so much, you know. Every time you say this is good, and then you say next one is good, right? But what can he do? For him, everyone is good. Depending upon where you are, you have to select. But Arjun is not very clear about it. Okay, Every time you would say, you have fear confusing, you know, you are... Every time you say, this is good, and then you, after some time, you say something else is good. You tell me which one is good. But that you have to find out for yourself. But yeah, I mean to say that there is only one thing to be realized, only one truth to be realized. But there are multiple paths in the process to attain that realization. Yes. Well, ultimately, one truth is to be realized and it is to be lived with. Lived with. But depending upon where you stand, you will have to start your path. So, while going up, you have some point to start with. Then you go up. From there you come down. When you complete the thing, it is same. But for you, a starting point is different. So, does that mean, uh, Ganeshji, like, if you start from that, uh, uh, the lower space or bhakti, then also you have to go through the higher states of jnana only to reach the realization. Does that mean Aya, that? If you, if you read the authentic, you know, text on bhakti, they either say that bhakti will lead to jnana, or they will say Gyan is included in Bhakti. They are not denying Gyan. You know. Similarly, this karm, people will say, you know, it includes Bhakti and Gyan. Or it is a path to Bhakti and Gyan. Or it is an outcome of the Gyan and Bhakti. Ultimately, all three of them have to be ensured. Okay. Thank you. Point is where you start from. That's it. Difference. Shall we break? Yes. So, thank you, Ganeshji, for that insightful session once again. So, we'll break for the lunch and we'll be joining back exactly at 2 p.m. Thank you. Namaste.